And we got the mic. And if I lean back, we got camera. Can I rotate it? Okay. Okay, that's going up. Ooh, I might be a little loud. Y'all tell me. Okay, so we want shoes, advanced boots and shoes techniques. We can do that. Let me hop over here real quick. So let me grab my art station and let me grab my YouTube. And let me close all this out. I haven't been in ZBrush in a whole minute, as they say. Um, so, excuse me if I'm a little rusty. View profile is me. So, let's make some boots. So, we do have a boot tutorial. It is a little dated, and it's not the greatest results, but we do have this. So I'll go ahead and post this in here. And then also, I believe at some point we did... Uh, that's right. <laughs> we did make a shoe for um, our Bebop character. But is there anything in particular? What any type of shoe you'd want me to make for any type of character? You know what? You know what I do actually. Um, let me let me load this guy up. So we have. Let me move this down here. We were streaming, and it was uh, not Adventure Time. It was a uh, regular show, so he's in my archives. Give me a second. We're gonna go to my archives here. Our legacy streaming, and we did a uh, regular show. Man, I can't find anything. LMNOPQR, well, when in doubt, grab everything. Y'all should download that if you don't have it. Reg, you uh, say death. Um, Man, is he not on my computer anymore? <laughs> wow, he is completely not on my computer. Well, I could make his boots too. Um, I don't know that we... Oh, we did put regular show guy on here. Death boots. Oh, you know what? I may have already kind of modeled his boots. Eh, we can skip that. Hey, everybody. Um, let's see here. I'm doing good from India. Uh... <laughs> cool. You know what I could do? Uh, oh, Nike shoes with a complex cloth pattern. Eh, most of that I think I would... Yeah, let's do that. Let's do... Um, I should run Nike shoe with complex pattern through uh, Mid Journey and see what it comes up with. Let's see here. So we're going to make a shoe. And what's a good woman's lifestyle shoe? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I just need something. I just need something to look at. And also, if I'm going to do it right, I probably want to bring in multiple views. You know what's good for shoes or anything for reference, really? Let's do this. Um, these are always fun, and they give you tons of reference images. Oh, man, some of these are atrocious. I love it. You know what, actually, what I do need? Um, I 
for one of my characters is something like this. Some old BK Knight style. <laughs> I think they were called that. I don't know. Let me just find something that would be nice and puffy. Boy, some of these patterns would be kind of a pain. I mean, it, it, the, the cool thing about doing this type of complex uh, shapes on top of an object is that you know, once you get the shape, the volume out, uh, you just basically paint these on and then you just make a bunch of panels and then you go in and you inflate and you do, you, you, it, you know, put some stitching in there and uh, it's, it ends up being not too difficult. Um, hard surface stuff, Nazi modeler, clip curve. Okay, yeah, we could do that too. Um, see brush shoes. Well, if I had a decent, you know, it would be a good warm up. Well, no, that would be mostly Z Modeler, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, we could do uh, a couple hard surface characters that I have that I'm thinking of, but I don't know if they'd be super exciting. Because Z Modeler would do most of the heavy lifting. Um, let's give myself something fancy. There we go. 1985. We've got our pictures here, so let me see if I can find just a side view that'll work. And I'm just going to be dropping these images. Let me just click here onto my desktop. Save image as desktop here. And we're going to go in here to texture. Oops, give it a second. For some reason, when I'm saving images, oops, do I already have something open in ZBrush? That's what it does. Okay, so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to Z plugin and I have a ref switcher in here. So I'm just going to pop this over to the side. And this is a, this is something you can download. Just do a Google search for ref switcher for ZBrush. I'm going to start loading my views in here. Let's go ahead and add a new project. We'll call this um, Jordans. It's been created. And then we'll go and uh, as we add views in here, we'll just uh, keep adding them to our views. So I'm going to go in here to texture import desktop and we're just going to grab the latest here and we're going to say texture add to spotlight z to go in and out of this mode and i'm going to crank this down and we're going to scale this back a little bit and this will be the start of my project so now uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here and save view and then i can assign a hotkey to this load view if i want to but at least i can start loading more reference images here i don't have to have like tiny references all over my screen uh, I'm just going here to make a cube first and I'm going to say turn on my floor so I know which way is forward. Z is forward here and we're going to mo move this to the side. Let's go ahead and say make poly mesh 3D. Um, the heck with it. A depth size down to zero, detect edges, target polygon count of half. I'm just going to make this nice even quads. Turn X symmetry on with X and then we'll just start. We'll do some clipping and such here. So I'm just going to make something about the size uh, and shape of that shoe here. So again, Z to hop in and out of this mode and then shift Z to turn that on and off. And then as I move this camera around, you know, obviously, actually I need to not store that view because we need to, let's go ahead and say save view now. Yes. So now we have our object in here. Whew. Um, I'm doing good. Beautiful. Okay. So let's get cracking. Now I am going to see if we can't find a one that's a little bit more orthographic. This one's kind of you know, down a little bit. This one's not much better. That's not a huge deal. And we got some bottoms on there. Perfect. Okay. 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 So, um, so really this shoe is kind of tilted down just a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm not going to turn on perspective or anything, but we're just going to tilt this down a bit. We're going to turn off floor. Uh, again, I'm going to go in here to save view. We're going to overwrite this one. Uh, and even here we can go through and you say, you know, if you wanted nice, even quads for this, you could say uh, detect edges, zero mesh or half. We still have X symmetry turned on. Then you can hit control D a couple times because it's already creased your open edges. And we're going here to geometry, delete lower. We got some nice geometry. Hold down control shift, going here to knife curve. And then we're just going to go through and just start carving in uh, the shape of the shoe, maybe like so. And there we go. There's your shoe. How awesome is that? Now, uh, I am going to do a quick uh, geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x axis here. 
and let's go ahead and turn off polyframe here. So that would be the, the start of our shoe. And you know what? Let's go ahead and just dynamesh this thing. So whatever resolution we're at, 128 seems to be fine. I'm gonna go in here to tr um, trim dynamic, uh, turn off the line cursor to surface. There we go. And again, it, like I said, it's been a while since I've been in ZBrush, so give me a second to <laughs> get warmed up. Uh, I think I'm I think I'm set up okay. So we got the basic uh, uh, shoe shape. Uh, that's one way you could start it. Uh, one thing that might make it a little bit easier though, because we are kind of on a like that tilted axis, is to start from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go grab this bottom shot here. I'm going to say save image as. And again, we're just going to throw this right on our desktop here. And then we're going here to texture, and we'll go ahead and say import, and we'll just grab it. And we'll say add it to our spotlight. So now the cool thing about starting with this view is this is going to give you, uh, let's go ahead and hit Z and we'll move this up and that size is pretty good. So uh, again, we have X symmetry turned on here and geometry modified topology mirror and weld. So now if you start with this shape, um, and again, if you want to, we can actually just go back here to our uh, shape we were at before we started carving. Um, Again, we're going to treat this as an orthographic view. So control shift and we'll turn off actually X symmetry because we don't need that on. So if we just start kind of knifing through, it doesn't have to be all that accurate just yet or ever. I don't know that we're going to necessarily nail this. And you could use clip for this, I suppose, since we're just pushing that geometry straight back. Um, okay, so we have our cube here, and then as we started knifing through, let me turn on my floor here. Okay, where's the forward? All right, so we got the shape of our shoe here, and we'll go through here and we'll say Dynamesh this result, and I'm going to go through here and just kind of, I don't know that I've got you know, let's dynamesh this resolution a little bit lower and we'll go through and just start getting the shape of our shoe going. So probably a decent way to start. And now that we have that, oh, did we save that one? We didn't save that one. So shift Z to turn this one back on and then align this back up. And this will be our save view two. And then we'll go back in here to load view one and again, it is in, on a slight tilt, which is totally okay. I'm going to take my move brush, say load view one here. I'm gonna just move this back, move this forward. And we'll give ourselves like a slight kind of tilt at the front here, like so. And there we go, we've got our shoes started. And now it's just a matter of, you know, loading in the different views, matching them up, and then starting to put on uh, your details. Uh, the most important thing though at this point is to make sure that you get Let's go ahead and just redynamesh this. Just make sure you get all the stuff or the volumes correct, because as you're starting to get more and more detailed, you don't want to be caught in a situation where your your volumes aren't right and you have to move around a bunch of different things, because that gets to be kind of a pain. So um, that was the fun part, and then the rest of it's just kind of tedious. But uh, let's see, load view one, load view two. Let's go ahead and scoot this back out here. And even this one's a kind of a tilted angle, like so. Ah, shoot. This would be a lot easier if people would, you know, when you're taking a picture of something, put the zoom all the way in and then take a picture of it. <laughs> uh, but obviously people on AB aren't gonna do that for me. Uh, let's see, Shift Z. Let's go in here to H. H polish this down and then hold down Alt to polish it up. So a nice flat backside here. And let me go ahead and have some of this reference just up if I can. Uh, back view, front view, side view, inside view. I guess that's everything I need. Man, these are actually, and the other bad thing about this one too is that these are kind of busted. <laughs> these are kind of uh, well used, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, I suppose. But, um, hmm. That would be the start of it. I don't know how much further I can get with this thing without 
really getting tedious with our with our reference here because it's basically just going to be loading in reference and matching uh, all the views here and then having me get uh, reacclimated with ZBrush. I've been in rigging land for a long time. It seems like the past month. So we'll go ahead and scooch this out here. And then clay brush or clay buildup brush here. And round this out. Okay, so we don't have the other side of the shoe. If you ever do want to model the other side of the shoe and you don't have reference for it, you can just go in here to mirror across the x-axis and that'll just mirror it temporarily. Uh, and then you could go through here and let's say, uh, I guess we'll save this one. Save image as, we'll throw this onto the desktop. We'll go in here to texture import and we'll grab the latest one and then we'll say texture add it to spotlight um, let's make this one a tiny bit smaller uh, this one we don't need so we can just kill that one and is this the only one? Oh, this one we don't need we can kill that one and it's saving all these so when I delete them it'll bring them back uh, okay so this is this view here so if I, I just I would just need to mirror this to get back here and on this one we probably need to turn on perspective which is okay and you can actually you see this is black these blacks are going to transparent just hit z go in here to intensity and just knock that forward a little bit and then we'll go ahead and match this angle up with perspective on we'll go ahead and say save view three and then we'll just use our move brush here and then let's go back to view three here and just match this one up okay so we're kind of I wish I could lock it. There we go. So this is essentially what we have here. So we got view three saved, and then I guess go through here and say view two. Uh, let's go ahead and mirror this back, and then perspective will be turned off because that's how we saved view two. And then we'll just make sure that this is still generally the shape we're looking for, and then we'll go back to view one and make sure that. Okay, this is probably a little bit more lean, so we'll go ahead and save the view one here. There we go. So we're gonna move this back, and now hopefully our volumes are generally-ish correct here. Move, move, move. Okay, something like this, and then we'll take another scoot around here. Maybe do some slight moves in here. And again, if you want to make something, uh, there's a couple different ways you can make something planar with like your trim dynamic or trim adaptive or your planar brushes. I'm just using H polish to kind of polish back and then hold down alt to polish up toward you. Just for those broad, the broad front plane here. And then ah, on this bottom here, I still feel like this needs to kind of be that a little bit more. But again, without, you know, if I, if I would have prepped for this, I would have had all my, the, the, the tedious stuff I'm doing now, I would have already had kind of done. <laughs> I would have had all the views loaded up. I would have had the volume blocked out and we'd already be doing the fun stuff. Because um, this is really the most important part and the most tedious part, which is lining up your reference, getting your volume correct, and then adding the details is just kind of the next part that's actually doing something. I'm doing good. Um, have you ever tried the tube tool on Nomad Sculpt on iPad? It's insane. I haven't used a uh, Nomad Sculpt at all. I don't have an iPad. Um, and I don't sculpt on the couch too much, but I've heard good things. John Yu, uh, I think we're making a shoe today. <laughs> uh, I did play Skeptic. Oh, yeah, I just emailed you like two minutes before we went on, but I got a game and a half into Skeptics and uh, before I had to call it a day. It was very fun. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, you should find a shoe. Last reference to build off that. Yeah, let me. I'll see if I can find something. Um, oh, you can also get scan data if you have a shoe. You could go through and do photogrammetry and just kind of get you a shoe volume in there. That'll take a lot of the guesswork out of it too. Um, let's see. Uh, started learning Maya. Is it any good, or should I ask them to learn ZBrush instead? Uh, well, I mean, 
if it's Maya for animation academics, like you say here, then I would say definitely Maya is a good software to learn for animation. It's a good software to learn for modeling too, but um, ZBrush is good for modeling, not great for animation. So those powers combined, I think you're in good shape. Um, cool, excellent. <laughs> Mark's my dad's name. Uh, ZBrush making high poly game assets, but I want to go deep into organic modeling and sculpting. Um, okay, well, you could use some of these techniques too. Um, I've actually been doing rigging and mocap stuff in Maya, uh, which would translate to Cinema 4D, I think, but um, yeah, mostly Maya. Uh, I haven't played games in a while, honestly. I think the last game I really put a lot of time into is Fallout 3. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. I, I, uh, I, it's, been a, it's been a long time since I've sat down and really played a game for anything other than like some reference. I've been too busy trying to learn some stuff, <laughs> getting out of my comfort zone, as I said, which is what I've been doing since my last live stream, basically, is um, a lot of rigging stuff. So, okay, uh, we got this. Let me see if there's any other, okay, this one might be a good one. Let's go in here to save image as, and we'll just drop this down into our desktop here. And I'm going to say, again, a lot of the same old stuff. We'll go in here to import, grab that latest one, texture, add it to our spotlight here. We'll go ahead and scale it down just a bit. And we're kind of sculpting this one. We'll turn perspective back on. This is, and if you do ever need to, you can go in here to draw and then take your focal length and change that to like 35 or 50 or 85, whatever kind of matches. This one looks more like a 35 and uh, it'll save those um, settings as well. Okay, so we can line this one up maybe. And we'll go ahead and say, save you four. And now this is like just a huge envelope. Uh, and you can, again, you can send hotkeys to these. I'm a little wary to do that. I had to delete them earlier because I kept accidentally hitting them. Um, so you can scoot this stuff around. And then of course, once you do this, you need to snap to your other views and make sure you didn't do anything uh, too crazy. This one was the mirrored one. So we'll just mirror that across the X. Make sure this is uh, somewhat still relevant here. It still wants me to scoot this back. And this one's losing some shape. And then view two, mirror this back. And this one, maybe we need to actually move this one around because I don't want to keep moving and matching a view that's not accurate, accurately portrayed for that view. So maybe we can go through here and say, save view two for this one, overwrite it. Um, so this one seems like it has a lot more volume through here and kind of shrinks back this way maybe. But of course, here's the problem. This one is saved as uh, orthographic, uh, which is not great. So you know what? We'll turn on perspective for this one. I wanted it for the bottom of the shoe, but it's not doing me any favors for the rest of the shoe, right? So we'll put this back here and then we'll overwrite this one now. I'm probably destroying that. And then we'll go back here to load view one. Okay. Oh, this one needs perspective on too, actually. So we'll turn perspective on for this one and then we'll resituate it. Okay. Now I'm starting to remember. My brain's kicking in. Uh, say resave over view two or view one. Okay. So put this on here, move this around. I think we're getting close. So load view one here. Uh, if you don't have this, you can also, I mean, on my YouTube channel, we, we go into a bunch of stuff for different ways to save views. Uh, one of those is document zap link. You can save views in here. You can also go in here to movie timeline show, and you can just click in here and save views and use your arrow keys to select the, these are like keyframes. Um, and then of course I'm even using reference, reference, reference switcher. Hey Alex. Um, uh, oh, did I miss one? Cool. I think I answered all the questions. I'm sorry if I missed one. Um, custom brushes using images. That might be a little tougher. Uh, translating uh, an image into like a depth uh, height map or something like that might be a little trickier. Um, cool. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. So I think we've got our, I think we've got our uh, stuff lined out here. So let's go through our views one more time. Uh, it matches pretty close. Oh, this one is again, that mirrored one that we did. Yeah. I think these are good enough. 
Um, this one I think needs to maybe scoot around this way a little bit. Let's go ahead and save U4 over this one. And a little more volume here, a little less volume. Oops, here. Come on. And if you, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get to that, so I won't, I won't bring it up now. But you have to do, turn on a setting in order to kind of paint through. So let's go ahead and get the tongue up there. And I'm not a giant fan of sculpting in perspective, just something I don't really do. Um, but we'll go ahead and clay brush this out here. Alrighty, so we've got a volume working. I think everything's in place. Uh, so let's do a little quick refine pass. I'm gonna again bring my reference back. We'll go in here to view one. Um, and we gotta mirror this back. Sorry, I keep forgetting I have that reference on there. Okay, so uh, one way to kind of go through and start getting this a little bit more refined is to go into, uh, well first let's go in here to Dynamesh. I'm gonna raise the resolution up just a bit, maybe to 112. Uh, so you get a little bit more resolution when you read Dynamesh. And then you can go to here, um, let's go BPA for our paintbrush. And then we're gonna go into our brush menu. Go down here to samples and turn on spotlight projection. So I can go in here, we'll turn the, oops. Um, again, BPA. Uh, this is global, so it'll do it for all brushes, I believe. Uh, RGB paintbrush, and we can just go through here and we can paint this right on here. Again, if you're getting pure blacks that are going transparent, just go back in here to that intensity and just crank that to the left. And that'll get rid of those pure blacks there. Let's turn off L. We can turn off our laser radius. And we can literally just paint those here. So those are kind of the details that we want on this side and we could even while we're doing this let's change our skin to uh change our material the skin shader for a little bit brighter so we'll go in here to view uh, i'm sorry go in here to view two and we'll just do the same thing so we'll grab all the bottom detail on here and this isn't so important you know it's not real this is super detailed stuff so you don't need all this detail on there but you know, while we're here we might as well just put it on there and then this one this one might be a little bit interesting, but we'll give it a shot. So on this one here, uh, BPA, we'll go through and we'll make sure, and you can hit Z and turn down this opacity too to kind of make sure that nothing's going real wonky. Okay, I think that'll work. So we'll put a little bit of side detail on here and we'll just see if it makes sense when we get rid of all this. And then on this one, I guess that's fine. So I forgot we mirrored and then we <laughs> started doing this one. So on this one, if you wanted to, you could say, uh, I'm sorry I'm confusing the issue with mirroring. It's not really all that necessary, but if you wanted to keep it consistent with the other shoes, uh, you could just mirror it back over and we can put it on this one and then we can just overwrite view four. So now if we go through here, uh, BPA, and we'll just say this whole side of the shoe or something like that. So there's kind of uh, what we have going on. And we don't have a view of the inside of the shoe. So let's go ahead and grab that one. Here's the inside. So we'll say save image as desktop. Boom. And one more. Texture. Import. For. You. Add. Move it around. I wonder if there's something from Westworld I could have made. I haven't really been paying attention. Um, wait, no, that is the inside. Ah, it's the inside of the wrong shoe. Ah, I'm constantly having a mirror to get the right reference. Um, oh well, I guess we'll just have to deal with it. Okay, so we'll have perspective turned on for this one and we'll kind of get this lined up as best we can. And we'll say let's save you five and we'll match this just a little bit here. Five, move it. Uh, BPA for our paintbrush, and let's paint the inside of the shoe.
All right, so that's generally what our shoe is going to look like. Uh, just for completeness, let's go in here, save image as, save. We're going to just do the whole dang thing. Uh, texture, import. One more. I think this will be our last one. Grab it, add it, Z. And again, I'm, I'm playing it fast and loose with, uh, dang, we don't need all these. You are gone. You are gone. You are gone. With which side is mirrored. So I'm just going to have to pay real close attention to if I need to mirror the object or not in order to match my reference. Because you know what I could do is I could go and mirror that reference and keep myself consistent, but it's too late. I've already committed. So we have perspective turned on. We'll match this back view as best we can. And we'll say save view six, and then again BPA, and we'll go through here and we'll paint this on up. Boop, boop. There we go. So now we've got kind of the views uh, that we're looking for. So now we can go through. I'm going to go through here with uh, render and say that turn, that turn that fade opacity up just a bit, so I can go through here and see if this will jog any. And I need to get this reference up. Eh, you know what? We'll just pick one. Oh, the cycle through the reference on eBay. Okay, so if we mirror this back here, uh, no, we need to keep it mirrored. I'm sorry, I'm trying to match my brain to whatever reference I have up. Okay, so uh, this is looking okay. I'm gonna go through here with my clay brush, turn off Z or RGB so I don't, I can just sculpt without poly painting. And we've knocked our poly paint back so I can see the, see the sculpt a little bit better. You can try switching here. Let's do like a matte cap pearl. So I can see a little bit more of the forms here. Oh, also on you hold down shift, turn off RGB. So when you um, when you smooth something out, you're not smoothing out your uh, poly paint. There we go. Okay, and this is the inside of the foot. It kind of swoops down a little bit. Uh, just so it doesn't get super boring, I may say this is good enough. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off perspective so I can make sure that generally the foot is flat where it needs to be. And then we may need to go in here with our trim dynamic and you can go through and you can match, you know, the, the reference that you've painted on at this point, if you need to kind of push some verts back into position. So you can use your trim dynamic for that and then go back in your H polish. Just make sure RGB is turned off for any brushes that may want to add some of its own poly paint, which at this point you probably don't want to do. Uh, unless you want to go through here and start matching up some of your details. You can just hit C, to, uh, hover over any point on this object and hit C. It'll sample the RGB values. And then again, go in here to BPA. Usually what I'll do though is I'll go into standard brush, just turn on RGB and turn off Z add as needed. And then I can go through here and I can just paint I'm like, okay, this kind of goes up and over. Let's sample this one a little bit wider. So we're gonna go here and this is gonna swoop over so I can just kind of overwrite some of that paint detail for our major forms. Hit C here and we'll just go ahead and paint this black. It looks like it goes all the way around, oh, not all the way around. It kind of stops back here where that tab is. So we'll just go ahead and add that like so. And then this tab here goes up into the white here. So this whole tab goes up then this stays red so you can kind of start designing your shoe on your volume, matching your reference and making sure everything lines up. You know, like this is probably gonna go straight back. The white's gonna go all the way around here. So again, just a little bit of uh, cleanup work. And then on the inside of the shoe, this probably lifts up, it looks like a little bit. Outside, inside, mm, that's hard to say. You know, it'd be a lot better too is if I had the actual shoe sitting. If I could have like modeled one of my gym shoes. <laughs> I only have Adidas though. They're not real exciting. But that would help you a lot. Uh, that's just true for anything though. Anything you're modeling. If you have a physical version of it, um, boy does that ever help. But anyway, here's the overall volume. I'm gonna move all this over just a bit. Just because it looks like it's leaning. And that's also something you probably want to do as well is do the obvious fixes you need to do because you could be caught up in like matching your camera views and it could be throwing your views off and you're trying to match views with a really poorly shaped model. Uh, and also if you want to go in here to sub tool and turn off that little paintbrush and then go back here to white, you can start seeing 
you know, all that moving you're doing and then going in here and reseeding your volumes basically. So again, that inside is going to kind of cup in here and you know, I think it does, it doesn't look like it, but I do think this will take a little trim dynamic on that inner foot and we'll just kind of scrape that down just a bit. Go back in here with our H polish brush, we'll flatten this bottom out. Again, hold down Alt to polish up to your plane and then let go of Alt to polish down to the surface here. And then we'll call this one Dunnish as far as our volume. And then from here, and actually what might is a lot easier too to match is because this one's kind of crumply and rubbery <laughs> as far as the materials and it's kind of old. But if you're doing like a nice new wing tip or a boot or something, those are a lot easier because those are, those are a little more hard surfacey and they're a little more consistent. I kind of picked a difficult one. That's okay. So H polish here, smooth. Now here's something to keep in mind is if while you're doing this, uh, if we turn poly paint back on, you see your poly paint's back. If you have it off and you re mesh and turn your poly paint back on, it's going to lose your poly paint. So just be careful that you don't dynamesh. And if you dynamesh with poly paint on, you're fine. It'll, it'll keep your poly paint or reproject it however it needs. Um, but just something to keep in mind. So on the inside of the shoe here, God, it does dip down. This is kind of a weird, I'm seeing some stuff that's like, well, that doesn't look right. And then I look at the reference and I'm like, oh no, it actually does just kind of go oh, right there. Okay. 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 So this kind of goes up and over, which is accurate ish. So this one goes here and then the laces will just do last. I'm not overly concerned about those. Those are, those can kind of be tedious, but there's some tricks we can do for laces. So let me just grab another view here. And again, this is the inside of the shoe. So I'm gonna mirror it real quick. And it looks like, really, this is kind of backwards because this, this is the inside of the shoe. This side needs to be higher. And then this side needs to be lower. And I just uh, dynamesh, but that's okay. Cause these aren't gonna really, let's see, clay brush here, hold down alt. And again, sorry, this is the really, really super boring part. Like I said, if I would have prepped for this, I would have done the volumes first so we could just hop into making the cool stuff. Because again, the more than anything, this is just tedious. And if you're going to use your standard brush again, make sure you just turn uh, Z add back on for the standard brush. And I just cycle between RGB and Z add for that, as opposed to going to BPA, which you could assign to a hotkey and use um, if you'd like. Okay, that's a little bit more what I'm seeing. And again, I am making it extra confusing by mirror having to mirror my left and my right just to match my reference because I don't have shots for necessarily all of the stuff but okay so it goes up in the front we got higher on the toe side lower on the pinky side uh, this kind of goes in and it's not like this is a there's a foot in here so it does kind of crumple in on itself which I'm I'm not gonna do too much of that all right Okay, and I do have Smooth Stronger turned on just in case your your Smooth isn't acting like mine. If you go in here to Smooth Brush Modifiers, you can hold, you can see that uh, Weighted Smooth Mode is set to one on my Smooth Brush, so that just gives me a little extra oomph. And I can always hold down Shift and turn down Z Intensity if that's a problem. But generally speaking, I just have that on. Okay, because we are working at probably a little higher resolution than I need to be. Uh, side view, let's just match real quick. And this is the outside, perfect. I'll go ahead and match this here, and that goes here. Okay, I think we've got uh, the tedious, tedious-ish part done. So let's do one more round now that the shape is a little more solidified. I'm going to do one more quick round so we know where stuff is going to go. So we're going to go, whoops, load view one here. Uh, perspective is turned on. And then for this one, I'm just going to kind of reset this so that it matches close as I can. Maybe some big moves here. Just some, just some, just some, just some moves. Just some moves here. Because again, I, I want to kill my volumes, but I do need to match the reference. 
Okay. Okay, again, uh, standard brush, RGB turned on. I'd like to turn lazy radius off while I'm doing this stuff. And then we'll just grab a nicer snapshot of this outside here. This one will be a little more concrete and we'll start laying our panels in. You know, let's go all the way across the shoe. Let's see how far that gets us. All right, all right. Now, uh, again, I do, just in case, uh, I do have fade opacity still turned on. Just so I can see my geometry a little bit better. And then we'll go in here to load view two. Uh, this is, I don't need that just yet. And then load view three, we're gonna, this scares me when I do this, we're gonna mirror this one here. Actually, let's go down to load view four, five. Let's go ahead and mirror this. Okay, so this is the inside of the shoe. So I'm gonna mirror this here. And I'll say again, load view five. Um, let's tap and just make sure, I got it. it was pretty close actually. So we'll scoot this back just a bit. And this, man. Does this need to come down even further? Urgh. So ambiguous. Let's say save you five. Okay, so again, just big moves, big moves. Big soft moves here. And if I move this way down, does that ruin anything? No, we're good. We're still good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and paint the inside of the shoe here. before you know and on this one I need do need to turn down and turn up intensity just a bit okay and this one we could do it we could have a mirrored and just match whichever side that we want um, I suppose it really doesn't matter close enough and if you just tap on your object that has ooh, what's that under transform uh, this should be on by default, your local transformation. So if you just tap on your object, that'll be where your object rotates around. If you're not using right-click navigation, I should say. And that way you can kind of know where at least your pivot is. Okay, right down the middle. And then the back. Actually, let's just mirror this and we'll go to the whatever back view we had. Good enough. And I'm thinking this is actually tilted down even more, maybe. Who knows? Hard to say, right? Scoot it, scoot it. Are you save over? Yes. And then we'll just paint. Sorry if that's loud. Okay, I think that is as close as we're going to get for, uh, you know, just kind of putting our landmarks on there, right? Um, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup work because you can't trust me matching camera views, as you've seen. So I'm just going to go through here, just sampling colors with my standard brush with RGB turned on. And we're just going to kind of do a quick pass to make sure my red areas are where my red areas are supposed to be. And then we'll follow the rubber white around. This all looks fine. And then again, rubber white. And if this dips down more, maybe I do got to go back in here and just give a little more to that red. And then on the front view here, so that kind of dips down on that side, dips down on this side. Sorry, I'm using really vague terms here. We're going to go to the front view on my reference, and I'm just going to make sure that this stuff is about where I would want it. I'm just ignoring the laces for now. So it comes in this way and then it kind of dips in and then comes this way like here and then scoots around. So that's all correct. And then on this side, same deal. This comes in, goes down. I'm actually going to give a little bit more tongue here. Here we go. And through here, loop it back. It does go wrap here. And actually this, this kind of, I was gonna scooch that up just a little bit. So the cool thing about this is it's kind of like liquify in Photoshop where you can paint 
on a 3D object, and then if you need to move that 3D object, uh, you're fully free to do so. No one will stop you. Uh, just make sure it's not destroying your volumes when you do that. So we're going to go to this outside here. And I'm just going to do a quick mirror so I can look at my, because my reference is on the other side. And then this here does go all the way down. So I probably need to, again, it's that liquefy thing where I'm going to take my actual 3D model. I'm not going to ruin the volumes, but I am going to kind of straighten these little sides out here. So instead of repainting, I'm just kind of going through, making sure all this stuff is you know, straight and flat. Okay, outside here, that goes up. This goes a little more in. I'm going to take the C and we're just going to sample this black that's going to be spotted, but that's just a texture. And then red picks up again right here. We wanted complicated, we got complicated. That shape, that little stamp right there, you may have to go in and find a really nice um, high res version of that. This kind of swoops down. And then C to sample. All right. All right, all right. So C here. Up, up, up. All right, I think all our landmarks are in. Here's where the tongue takes over and kind of tucks in on this side here. Let's get rid of that. Again, we're simplifying the idea so I don't get too lost. We're ignoring the laces. So this is all, we'll just all call this tongue through here. All right, so we have all the major landmarks of where things need to go, at least as far as the panels go. Um, this needs to be, damn, let me go to the inside here, make sure when we're looking at the inside, yeah, this goes up and over and we'll just mark this. We'll hit C and then I'll just draw that this is a separate panel here. And this is a separate panel here. And that goes back this way. So one <clears throat> little panel here, one little panel here. And then again, if I need to move something, instead of repainting it, I can just move it. Yeah, that's better. So that's a little sweet little pass through here. Woo, okay. I think we got it. And then again, just before we commit, we'll go in here and we'll turn off our poly paint and just make sure there's no really uh, gross <laughs> uh, volume changes. Again, don't dynamesh because you'll lose your poly paint, but you can go in here. I'm going to turn my Z intensity down on my clay brush. Actually, we'll do clay build up with a very low Z intensity. And we'll just kind of go through here and just kind of do some very light clay build up just to fill in some of these lumpy volumes that we're getting. And the lower you dynamesh, the less your resolution will be on your geometry and the easy it'll, easier it'll be to smooth out. Uh, the trade-off being, you'll have fewer verts to put your poly paint on. So, which isn't a huge deal. You can always dynamesh at a higher resolution and then paint, you know, your volumes are more important. Painting's easy, but I think we're okay. I think we're, I think we're in decent shape. Again, this, this would be the part where I would spend probably a whole hour doing this part, but it's a live stream and I don't want to put everybody to sleep. So we'll call this block out ready. Um, you can't use a background pick in a ZBrush Core Mini, can you? I don't think you can. ZBrush Core Mini and ZBrush Core are pretty stripped down. Uh, for shoes like those, can we keep symmetry until we're done with the detail? Since the shoe details are uh, pretty symmetrical, we can adjust to the foot shape later. I think that would be tough because the foot shape carries a lot of this. Um, the detail kind of wraps around that volume. I would be, yeah, I think you could give it a shot, but I don't know how successful that'd be. I don't know that I would be able to do it that successfully. Um, cool. Uh, is reference switcher an add-on? Uh, no, it's not. A, it's a paid. Um, it's not very expensive, but uh, it is a paid plugin. Uh, macro that saves camera perspective exactly activates it. It's focal length maximum so it saves the camera and also changes the arrow keys to switch cameras, not frames. Um, excellent. That'll work too. Um, yeah. Did you do? I'm sorry. I'm just getting caught up. Um, 
metahuman creator new e5 yes expert 3d scanning your face or do you want to create a triple a character fully rig mocap presets etc yeah i need to uh again i got caught up i had big plans for like a hard surfacing i was going to do and then um I was going to mess with MetaHuman a little bit, and I totally went down the rabbit hole on rigging. Um, it's been a while since I've done a lot of rigging stuff, so I just went did a super duper deep dive on rigging uh, that I'm actually in the middle of, so I got caught up. All right, John, you? Um, yeah, get some sleep, man. <laughs> um... Uh, in the left side, you could add the image you want in the alpha box. Oh, yeah. So there is a, if we go in here to, uh, I haven't really messed with it that much. If you go in here to alpha and texture, you're going to see you do have an alpha and texture transition you can do. Um, and I think in here, what would we call that? That's alpha and uh, let's just do this. I think that was a 2022 dual action brushes, two alphas, two textures, endless possibilities. I like being dramatic with my title so you can check this one out too this, will, this is kind of a good um i don't know there's some cool stuff you can do with this i don't use it a ton uh, i haven't used zbrush in a minute so that's probably why but uh there's some cool stuff you can do there uh can you approach the bottom with an alpha yes and usually when i'm doing the bottoms of shoes like for my um warhammer character let's just load him up real quick uh that was streaming 40k uh, ZBrush. We'll not. We won't do the bake one. We'll do just the high res block out. You know what? We'll do the block out refine. This is a nice cheap file. This is a low, low res file. So here's from last stream what we made. Uh, it's not the fully finished version. Uh, that's when I on uh, my bake files, but it's heavy. Uh, but down here you can see if I do. Um, those are soft, aren't they? There we go. So here, if we turn off dynamic, you're going to see um, they're 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 pretty. Let's go into solo mode here. They're pretty regular. Uh, this is basically uh, boolean, really precisely uh, placed booleans. In fact, I think I have. Uh, I didn't make one, did I? Usually, what I'll do is I'll do a sizzle video that I put out and market it. But I totally again, I got I got totally sidetracked. But uh, basically, what you'll do is you'll you'll get the the big shape of where these things need to go in and then I'll go back through with booleans and then I'll zero mesh with uh, poly paint uh, not poly paint poly groups so I can go through here and it'll zero mesh and you could clean this up a little bit better than I did but you know for what it is you know you hit D for dynamic and then you know do you know increase level of two smooth level of three uh, that'll give you uh, fairly precise results uh, and now as far as like <laughs> this thing for big clunky boots i would probably do you know something like that just go through and boolean and then zero mesh result um in this one here this one would be a nightmare i mean it's doable um let's hit uh let's go here to let's turn this off and we'll go back down here to z plugin load view four three two here it is um again let's go in here to standard brush um let's see i guess that's close enough right be, but you know what let's be very careful i'm going to go in here to um the bottom and we're going to go to the side view i'm going to say control shift and we're just going to grab with select lasso the entire bottom here control shift drag and i'm just going to grab a little bit more control shift alt that's going to subtract my selection but just add it to my hidden selection so I can control shift drag then if I want to go through here and clean this one up I can so you just kind of bounce back and forth between your visibilities here okay okay uh, so now I've just got the bottom here so now if I go in here to view two I don't have to worry about that paint going anywhere it shouldn't uh, you could use masking for that but visibility is a little more easy to see than masking which can be tricky sometimes Okay, so uh, for this, what you could do, and it would be much more precise, uh, go through here and just create these shapes to Boolean out. Um, but you're right, I think this would be, hmm. God, maybe maybe I'm, I would even go into Photoshop and just like draw out these lines and then bring those in as an alpha that I could, oh man, this is a tough one. This is like one of those projects that would be like an all day thing for me. It would take me a day to make a really nice shoe. Unfortunately, we don't have a day, so we're gonna, gonna 
fudge a little bit of it. Um, what in the world are Clark Wallaby shoes? Look those up. Images. Ah, okay. Actually, these would have been a lot easier. <laughs> um, yeah, these are nice. So they're basically the same thing as the volume, only you would only have like three panels, you know, and then the big, thick, foamy uh, bottom there. So uh, easier. Uh, but that wasn't the assignment I was given this morning. Uh, it was complex, so we got a lot of complex shapes here. But they're not really that complex. It's basically like a bunch of stuff in weirdo shapes that you have to match. But since we've already got it planned out, it's really just a matter of panel loops and masking more than anything. So it's not rocket science. It's a good thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I always have trouble wrapping things around something. Um, <laughs> yeah, when I when I wrap those chains too. Um, see here let's kill this I'm gonna go back to my reference here uh, I, I did have to do a little bit of trickery and honestly for chain links the other cool thing too is if you're ever in a bind you can always just control drag and duplicate it's a little more tedious but it gets the job done okay so we have and I gotta remember this is the inside of the foot here I'm gonna just do a quick mirror although I'm gonna have to stop doing that because as this starts getting more and more complex uh, it's going to be harder and harder to keep track of what all needs to be mirrored and not. So let's go ahead and I'll just pick one. So let's go back to... I guess it doesn't matter. I'm just going to mirror this. We're going to be working on the negative axis, negative x-axis, or the, le the right shoe for the character. Um, okay, let's just go through my reference here. And we'll start cleaning this up, which we've already done quite a bit of. And these kind of go in and out right so they kind of kind of scoop in and then scoop out and then scoop in and scoop out and if I wanted to do this really accurately that is something I would want to match because these are scalloped for a reason they're scalloped where the um, laces line up in my case today I'm not going to be overly concerned I'm going to again we're, we're fudging today if I was doing this for real production or to get a job at Nike or something I would definitely pay a little more attention. And actually, now that I look at these, they're actually so old, they're not scallops. So ignore what I just said. Some of them do get fancy with scalloping. This is just when they get pulled in, uh, the laces kind of pull the fabric, which is good. That actually is going to be an easy detail we can add that'll add a nice, some nice realism to it. So, you know what, we'll keep this here. And I'm going to go up with this one. This red kind of goes over. So now I guess let's start plotting in our panel lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, and again, if you need to make some adjustments, go ahead and make them while it's simple. You know, don't ruin your volumes, but if you need to scoot some stuff around, just kind of go and push and pull a little bit, match some things up. Now's the time to do it while it's all on one object, right? And you're basically just pulling it around as a, uh, kind of like a Photoshop image that happens to be on a piece of 3D. And this is gonna go all the way through and then just right on the back, there's that tab. I'm just gonna put that right here in the middle. I think that'll make more sense. And then we'll sample here, sample here, and this is all just red. Okay. Now, if you wanted to make it really crystal clear, you could go in here with like bright red and be like, okay, this panel line goes here and then a big black line, you know, where something cuts across, uh, that might behoove us just to make it a little more, because you're gonna, you're probably gonna miss something if it's ambiguous like this. So you can just go through here really quickly and just be like, okay, that cuts all the way across. This is a separate tab here. This piece cuts all the way across. And this actually kind of scoops down a little bit. And that's the thing about <laughs> so when I why I end up doing things like SpongeBob is because the volumes or the making the block out is fast and easy, uh, and then you can get right into the details. Whereas the more complex the object, uh, sometimes the important part again is making sure your volumes are correct, and that can sometimes get a little tedious. So it makes me sweaty for night live streams, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so just be aware that my armpits are just pouring sweat right now because I'm afraid you guys are bored. So I'm going to go ahead and scoop this around here. 
and then we're gonna sample black again, and then again, this is a, let's sample this one. And again, I'm just tapping C on my keyboard to sample color. So this goes all the way across here. This is gonna be a separate piece here. Same thing on this side, separate piece that goes over here. And then here, yep, this scoops around. It's actually a little thinner. You can actually go in here with your pinch brush and you can pinch things together. Uh, again, just be careful of your volumes you're not doing anything too zany. Uh, but this is actually okay. And then, okay, this one goes over. We already got that. That one does dip down. We've got that. We're in good shape. We're doing, it's come along better than I thought it would. And then this goes, okay, I'm gonna take this back just a little bit and then have it dip down. And let's color this all in black. And the scary thing too is I need to make sure I'm looking at the inside and the outside appropriately. Sometimes I'll get my brain messed up on my reference. Okay, here's the inside of the foot, perfect. This matches, great. This is a panel here, great. This comes down, this I'm gonna fill in so I don't get confused. And actually, this is all supposed to be black. I thought it was like some sort of <laughs> leopard print or something, but it's just old cracked leather. So we'll just go ahead and fill this in with black. We'll, we'll make these a little more factory fresh for them. Here, yep, here. Yep, here, yep. All right, and you need those those affirmations while you're working too, so you feel good. You're like, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm a good modeler. <clears throat> Just tell myself that. Okay, I think I've got our block out ready. Everybody ready to put some panels on this thing? Make it for real? Um. These are land on a prop artist, a beginner, or character. Uh, there's not a lot of character artists in the world. Uh, that's a tougher one, I would imagine. I think there's more bodies available or needed for environment art and the prop art and stuff like that. Um, every company I've ever been at, like, um, you know, Sony or CA, it's always been like, you know, 60 environment artists for every five character artists or something like that. So it's a tougher, it's a smaller piece of that pie, usually. Not, not all the time. Not every studio, but in my experience. A uh, video of ornamental helmet, want to make a bike helmet. How should I go? Can you tell me just the workflow? What's the right way for a uh, bike helmet would be exactly like what we're doing here. If you have reference of a bike helmet that you want to make that's got a bunch of complex shapes, it's a, you break it down to what's the overall volume I'm trying to match, and then what's the secondary volumes I'm trying to match. And in this case, we don't have to worry about that because it's just one major volume, but for like a, a bike helmet, you might have one or two or three major volumes that are separate objects and then uh, paint the detail on, go in there and boolean stuff out and munge it around and then rebuild it like we're about to do. So not, not too different than what we're doing. Unless it's like an ornamental bike helmet, in which case it would be like, like we did on the Warhammer 40K, which is like, uh, let me just load it up here so you all can get to it. Uh, I haven't put it on my art station yet, have I? Uh, some of the stuff we do for live streams ends up here and then there's the what's new, so you can check this out. And then for the YouTube stuff, if you go to my playlist that I've created, every live stream that we do, if you look for the big blue genie, if you go in here, it's always latest from the top. So there's our SpongeBob, Ships in a Bottle, Ecorche, uh, Finn, uh, McDonald's ha ha Happy, or the Mayor McCheese Mech we did. And then here's the Warhammer 40K, uh, part one and then part two. So I'll link you directly to that. But uh, anyway, when we go to the part two here, we did go through and, uh, you know, do the chest feathers and stuff like that. So if you're doing ornate stuff, depending on what you're making, it could just be a lot of just duplicating stuff around, mushing stuff around, Z modeler, you know, whatever you need to do for some of those detailed pieces. But it's a good start, I suppose. Let me go back here, and go back to my reference here. So uh, now, uh, let's not start with the super detailed stuff. Let's start with the big stuff. And the ma most major thing I see here is the separator. Sorry, um, the, the rubber bottom with the leather top pieces, right? And then the second big thing is gonna be that tongue piece of geometry. So what I'm gonna do, I always like to, you know, I'm gonna duplicate this off and hide the original just so I always have something to go back to. And let's go ahead and make this rubber uh, piece. The easiest way I think might be, especially if I want it nice, 
especially if I want it nice. I'm going to go in here and we're going to say, uh, let's turn off our poly paint here. Let's go into white. Uh, we're on matte cap pearl, by the way. You can go back to your matte cap gray or red wax if you're a real ZBrush wizard. And we'll go through here. And I'm going to polish the surface down. And then we're going to go through. What's the easiest way? I suppose what we could do. Here's a trick. So again, I have my original to go back to. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to pull the bottom off of here. And we're just going to make the rubber part. And we're going to make it very nice and low res. So we can use that as a... What would we call it? Like almost like an envelope so we can get very, very nice, smooth results without having to go through here and just do a bunch of sculpting because that gets tedious too. So while we're masking, you see that mask is going to cover, come over that edge. Uh, in my brushes here, if I hold down control, you're going to see I do have um, mask depth here. So if I hold down control and mask depth, you're going to see I can start masking and it'll kind of stop along that edge. You can also hold down control, go in here to auto masking. And again, hold down control because we're on our masking brush, you can go in here and you can turn on back face. So if your camera can't see it, your brush shouldn't be able to see it either. Uh, so between the depth mask, which is basically hold down control. So again, this is standard. Hold down control, we're in our mask brush here. Uh, go in here, turn on depth mask and take your outer and your inner depth and just pull that down. Not all the way to zero, but just a very small number. Uh, same thing for the inner depth, just a very small number here. You can save this mask brush out if you want, but that'll stop you. So if you start it on this side, it'll stop you at that edge. And if you start on this side, it'll stop you at that edge, just any major angle change. Um, so that's a way just to kind of grab the mask on the bottom of something. We also, underneath render, we do have fade opacity still turned on. That's why our mask looks kind of anemic. So we'll go through here. And again, if your camera doesn't see it, your brush shouldn't see it if you have back face masking turned on and you're auto masking. So, and you know what, let's turn off perspective. I'm not a perspective guy. So we'll go through here and we'll mask. And then now uh, we can just switch back to just a regular mask pin since we're not doing depth masking anymore to maintain our edges. So now we've got just that bottom part. I'm gonna hold down Control Alt and tap. That'll sharpen our mask and kind of make it more contrasty so we don't have any holes in it. Um, let's go ahead and if I zoom in here, you're gonna see this mask kind of cuts across here. Let's go in here to Geometry, Edge Loop Mask Border, that'll cut a border along here and then we'll hold down control shift tap geometry modified topology delete hidden uh, and then i'm gonna it's semi smooth around here let's go ahead and just run i mean if you wanted to just go to the edges you can go in here to masking mask my open border um grow mask and then control tap to invert that mask and then uh, deformation polish by features let's do an open circle and just tap that'll really smooth out your edges um, in this case, we could just do a polish by features and just smooth this entire surface out. It's not like that's going to hurt us any. Uh, so now that we have this, I'm going to do a zero mesh half. And you could manually and, um, go in and uh, just plot points, but I'm going to do it this way just because we're going to be plotting points in just a second on other things. So this zero mesh half down to something nice and low res. This might be fine. It's a little low, but you know what? Sometimes that's okay. So if we go out of here and we turn our shoe back on, we basically have the entire bottom plane of our shoe. And then if we just go through here, I'm going to say BZM for Z model brush or hit my hotkey for it. More likely, I'm going to go here, Q mesh, polygroup all or extrude. Polygroup all doesn't really matter. We're just going to pull up. Doesn't matter in this case. Sometimes it does matter. Uh, and then I'm going to go to display properties because we pulled inwards. If you pull out, you're fine. If you pull in, go in here to display properties and flip your normals here. Now, as I'm pulling in, it's actually getting smaller and I don't want that. So I'm going to hit W, control tap the blue part, and we're just going to do a slight scale just to kind of, you know, maintain that a little bit better. So go out of solo mode here. So now we're basically pulling up um, to the interior or this, this depth here. So I'm actually going to go into my move brush here and Actually, let's go, let's kind of overshoot where we need to be. And the cool thing about this is we have a bottom, top, and side polygroup. So I can actually go through here with my Z modeler brush, extrude polygroup all. And then instead of extruding, just hold down shift and that'll pull along that surface normal for that polygroup. So I'm gonna pull that out. And then let's go back around here and I'm just gonna just grab that move brush. And again, since we're moving less points, if this was a Dynamesh, it'd be like 80,000 polygons and it'd be all lumpy. Um, but now because we're moving fewer, points, as Stannis would say. We'll kind of move this out. And then if we need to um, smooth this, 
or you know do a dynamic subdivision which is what we're about to do uh, with these because we have less points or fewer points um, that would be easier so if I go into solo mode here we got you know very few points to work around and in fact let's go in here to crease PG that's under your geometry crease menu which is here geometry crease and then we just crease our polygroups and now if I hit D for dynamic that goes and turns on our dynamic subdivisions uh, in fact you can go down here to crease level and you can say like crease level of three smooth subdiv of four and that'll kind of give you a nice little fall off but it's all temporary you can do shift D to turn it off and uh, D to turn it back on and now you have a preview of what it'll look like when and if you do decide to subdivide that mesh and that is my oh god I'm gonna sneeze um, hold on Got the mute just in time. Um, <laughs> let's see. Long story short, fewer polygons means easier dynamic subdividing. Uh, and it's especially useful if you want to keep things nice and clean and have an easier time moving around, you know, major volumes and stuff. Now it does look like in my reference, this back end does go up a bit. So let's go in here and I'm gonna turn on uh, transparency with ghost turned off. And now we can kind of see through the object so I can kind of see my poly paint and I can kind of go through. And again, this is, it looks like a lot of polygons but it's just dynamic subdivision, it's not real. Um, and then if I want to, I can say W, control tap this top poly group here. Let's go ahead and do shift D so you can see what I'm doing. Essentially, I'm saying unmask just this top poly group and then hit Q to go back into draw mode. And then I can literally just go through here and say, like, okay, on the back end, um, you know, these things go up. Or what I could do also is hold down Control Alt W and I can go through here and I can just make sure all these go up. So that way I don't have to worry about like these middle polygons not following suit. And then just go in here and finesse this a little bit more. Again, W, control, uh, control tap, and then solo here. All right, so I think we've got everything where we need to. Uh, the other cool thing about having simplified geometry and polygroups is that if you ever go through here and you start lumping it out where it's like, oh, it gets wobbly in here. Remember, you can also go in here to polish by features. A feature is a crease or a polygroup. We got both, so we're in good shape. I'm going to turn on um, closed circle. Open circle just kills your volumes, but it does a really nice smooth. Closed circle maintains your volumes, but it doesn't smooth quite as much, which in this case is probably ideal. In fact, what I may want to do, mm, we'll leave it alone for now, but I'm going to do a quick polish by feature closed circle. You see how it kind of smooths everything out. Um, and in fact, again, you're dealing with not a lot of, let's put that down. Um, not a lot of polygons and you can still use your sculpting tools so you can go through here and you can H polish this bottom here and kind of make it so it's not kind of out and then you can go back in here with polish by features and smooth everything out and while you're doing that again you are averaging those verts a bit so just go back in there and kind of pull around so smooth them and then pull them back out to get your volumes back and there you go now you've got the rubber portion of the shoe matching our block out yay and that's a that's a a good first step, I think. So now looking at, uh, let me see if I can, can I zoom in? Let me see, open image and new tab. There we go. So now to refine this rubber here, you're gonna see it has the white kind of goes around and then the red is its own thing. And then it kind of has a, uh, a cut in for the stitching and then it has a rounded top. So I'm gonna do all of that with Z Modeler. I think that'll be our easiest the best bet. So I'm going to go in here, let's turn on polyframe and let's go back to our ref switcher here and let's load view one, two, three, trying to find if I have a good view here and I don't want to, damn, four, might have shot myself in the foot by mirroring earlier. This is fine. Okay, so this is just a visual reference and you know what I'm gonna overwrite now that we're getting a little bit closer I'm just gonna start overwriting our view here so basically this path along here I'm gonna do Z modeler brush insert single edge loop and it kind of favors the top just a bit 
So that'll be the path that our stitching is going to take. And then this bottom part here, I'm actually going to extrude down. I think this is the white part. And then if I go in here, let's go ahead and duplicate what we're working on. Hold down control shift, isolate just that red part, delete hidden. And this is going to be our red that we would have to go through and model. So I'm going to say no, another crease PG, hit D for dynamic. And now we've got, wait, did I not? Duplicate, sorry, change modified volume, delete hidden, extrude out just a tiny bit. Uh, again, crease PG, hit D for dynamic, and now we've got uh, our top white part here, our bottom red part, and then on this one we do have our cut in line. Uh, what's a good way to put stitches in there? Uh, we'll, we'll treat this as, as if we're not doing it uh, in the texture, which is pretty accurate, or if you want to like 3D print this or something, you, you wouldn't want to do it just in the texture for this. So let's say Shift D. Let's go in here and say bevel edge loop complete here, and this will be here. And now I'm going to go through here. We're going to do an inset polygroup all legacy, and we'll just pull this in, and then we'll say Q mesh polygroup all, and I'm going to hold down Shift instead of, if I just Q mesh in, it'll add an edge loop. I'm just gonna hold down shift and just push that along. And we'll do another crease PG, which is creasing our poly group. So now when we hit D, we'll have a little cut in line here. And then, uh, like I said before, it is kind of rounded up here. So we can do a do a slight round. If you ever wanna, um, you know, moves this stuff around, you can go through and say, you know, let's slide edge loop complete. We can say, hey, let's move this up a bit. And then if we go in here and say insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, you can just click and drag on here and tap alt so we can get a new poly group going. Uh, drag out and maybe go up one. So interactive elevation, either in or out, and then interactive resolution up or down. And now we can kind of get a slight rounded here. I'm gonna make this all one poly group here. So now again, I'm just gonna make it easy for myself, just crease PG um, as needed. So then again, one more time, we'll do inset polygroup ball legacy. I'm going to inset just a bit. And then again, Q mesh polygroup ball. Just hold down shift, push this in, run a crease PG, D for dynamic. And now we've got kind of a rounded rubber here. And let's do a crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. That'll give us kind of a softer fall off for that one here. Same thing for this one. Two, three. And on this one, in fact, you're going to see it kind of, let's get rid of this one here. See, here's our rubber here. And then on this one, it kind of goes down and out. When in reality, it kind of goes in. So it's just easy enough. Again, one of the perks of not having just a ton of geometry here, you have to go and like do a trim dynamic around this whole thing. All you need to do is go in here to scale as you complete and we'll, sorry. And we'll uh, just kind of push along here and just kind of pull that in. So instead of scaling out or down, we can just kind of scale that whole edge loop inwards. So now when I hit D, it kind of goes in like it should. There we go. And that could be the start of a boat shoe or those Clark Wallabies we were talking about earlier. Same kind of workflow. <laughs> yes, geometry modified topology deleted. Um, I tried to shout everything out, but you're right, Coda, that is that comes up all the time. Uh, some tips for female head sculpting. I try a female face, but it looks like a male face. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the same techniques or the same brushes and the same workflow you'd use for a female to, a, as you would for a male face. I suppose for a female face, like a, a typical female face, it would be more emphasis on volumes and less emphasis on like, you know, let me dig in those nasal labial folds and let me really kind of <laughs> go in and lump this face up. You can get away with that on old men faces or male faces, but for female faces, especially young female faces, it's really, it's not harder easier. It's just basically like what your emphasis is on. Although really the emphasis is the same male face. You want to get those volumes, right? Female face. You want to get those volumes, right? Although for a male face, you can kind of fudge it or like, you know, why people love to sculpt old men and Z brushes because the, it's just awesome and fun. Um, female faces, it's more about the volume. So I would say my workflow for a female face would be work low res as possible. If you're doing Dynamesh, just keep the Dynamesh low until your volumes, primary and secondary forms on your face are exactly right. And then go in and subdivide and then just put in little touches of detail, but keep it low if you're doing a, a young female face. Um, 
yeah and if you want it like coda says if you're going for the archetypical female uh face it's like the big eyes and the small features and the softer forms and the the more vertical forehead and all the things that make something a little more feminine um for sure but as far as a workflow it's like keep things low because you're going to be you want nice smooth flowing volumes uh what happened when you keep dynamic subdiv without add more subdivision levels um yeah generally speaking i want dynamic just i'd only want to use dynamic and that's d to turn that on and shift d to turn it off and then at the very end if i ever need to go in here and be like this needs to be real geometry so i'm going to sculpt on it then i'll go through uh, but for now just leave it dynamic until you shouldn't have it in fact we could even it looks like this one here so see how this is perfectly just kind of creased we can go through here and just put a little bevel along here so we'll bevel as it complete and in fact i'm going to make this all one poly group here and we'll make this both all one poly group because i just want a, a fall off here so now here if i hit d for dynamic you're going to see we get a nice soft fall off and now instead of using creasing what i can do is we can go in here to insert single edge loop so now if i had dynamic turned on and i want to tighten this corner or this edge up i can actually just drop an edge loop in here and that'll go ahead and here it is at the very edge and it's very tight and then we as we move this out it's actually kind of hard to see isn't it as i oops d for dynamic as i put an edge loop in here it'll tighten and then as i move that edge loop back and if you want to see what i'm doing i'm putting an edge loop in and the closer i am here it's going to make a very sharp line and then the more i come out here it's going to give me a nice fall off so that's just a way to instead of creasing you're putting in a control loop so uh, anyway we're we're done with that uh, oh one more thing we got to do though uh, if i turn this off here we want to put a stitch through here it looks like the stitches are just kind of long so let's go ahead and do a quick save up here and then we're going to go in here to uh, let's go out of edit mode hit switch control n um what's an easy way let's go in here to uh, make poly mesh 3d here let's go down or i'm sorry just the poly cube or star go in here to initialize hit q cube we're just getting a very very simple cube going and i'm going to scale this out again it's kind of just a long thin sketch i'm going to hold down alt uh, along that z-axis and just kind of scale this down here and uh, you know let's simplify this even more we could even do this q cube resolution of one just for the simplest cube and then we can just go through here and just again scale along that axis and let's do this um we turn on our floor you're going to see we're in z symmetry so we can actually do a uh, mirror and weld in z and then mirror in z uh, geometry modified topology mirror and weld and then uh, turn on x symmetry and you can say transform symmetry in the z so now we're on both sides so now if we go through here and do like um insert single edge loop it'll do it on the z axis here hold down alt and we'll q mesh this down in fact if you wanted to you could go through here and you could say collapse edge and you could just collapse to those corners if you want a um, couple different ways you go about this but that's one easy way so now if i hit d for dynamic that's the stitch we're going to end up with i think this is actually okay so eh, screw it we'll just use this so this is going to be our long stitch we want our stitches to go like this right uh, this direction so i'm going to capture it in this direction uh, b create insert mesh new so now we have an insert mesh brush of course we want this to go along a path um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to turn off X symmetry, tap X, and then we're going to go into uh, stroke, and we're going to say curve mode. So now we're just basically putting the shape along a curve. Um, right now they're a little close together, so let's go in here to stroke, uh, curve step, and we'll say uh, 1.2 maybe. And then as we drag this out, there we go. They're kind of spaced out a little bit more. And that's about what I'm seeing here give or take yeah that's work that'll work um and of course you can save this we can go to brush save as and we'll put this into our uh, zbrush 2022 z brushes uh underscore imm we'll call this basketball um jordan stitch if you ever want the stitch back you can just go in here to your hit the comma key go in the brush go into your underscore i uh, come on Go in here to your underscore IMM brushes, and then somewhere in here is your Jordan's brush. Doesn't have a real great um, A, B, C, D, E, F, J. There it is. There's our Jordan stitch brush. So, go back to our shoe here. And 
hit F to frame. And now uh, we want to put that stitch right in there. So the good news is, let's go ahead, <clears throat> I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm going to do Shift D to turn off dynamic, and then I'm going to hit Control D. That's going to give us one subdivision, one actual subdivision. I'm going to hit Delete Lower. So again, I just want a little bit more geometry along that curve. Uh, hold down Control Shift, I'm going to isolate just this polygroup, Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. I'm going to hover over an edge with our Z Modeler brush. We're going to say Polygroup Poly Loop, and just tap, just tap Alt. So now we have two polygroups along this path, right? So now I go in here to stroke curve functions. We're going to frame our polygroup border. And then we're going to go back to our stitch brush. And then if we go out of solo mode here, essentially I'm going to take this stitch and just place it right along that path. So these stitches are too small. So make our brush size bigger. Just tap S on your keyboard and then make our brush size bigger. And then you can just tap on there. And, and in fact, you can actually just count like Hey, how many are supposed to be on from here to the toe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten ish. So you want to kind of match that. Uh, that's kind of from here to the toe. So again, brush size is a lot bigger, say 112. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eh, close enough. Um, if you want to embed these a little bit more, you can go in here to curve. Uh, we were messing around with depth on the masking. Um, if you go down here to brush depth, you're going to see it's a bed of 20. Let's do zero, or you can just drag this down. We'll retap this to update the curve, and that'll kind of drop those in. So, uh, again, we can hit uh, D for dynamic, and we'll say, okay, that's the smooth version. Let's do a, an embed of like just a slight, just like negative two, maybe. And just tap to re update. Okay. And not to be perfect, just close. And then you can see the curve is still there. I'm going to tap away from this to delete the curve. Or you can go in here to, uh, where can you go? Stroke, uh, delete, somewhere in here is a, uh, there it is, curve functions delete. So we've got this. It's still part of, I'm going to solo mode. Um, it still has that framed mesh that we duplicated off. So one thing you can do is you can just do a subtool split. Here you can just split this off. Uh, I like to go in here and do a visibility menu, hide point, control shift drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then now we've got this and now um, I can go through here with my move brush. It's a big old move brush and just kind of push these on back. There we go. Okay, okay. So we'll turn everything back on and now we've got the rubber part. Um, now we're going to get to slightly funner part here. So we'll gain the, the second biggest volume that I'm worried about is that tongue volume here. So we're going to take our original mesh here, we're going to duplicate this off, and I'm going to, it's, um, one thing you can do, if you can go in here like we did earlier, sorry I need to, I'm not hydrated enough this morning. And sticky lips. Um, oh you know what might help. There we go. Now, um, I've duplicated this off. You can go in here to render fade opacity if you want to, or you can just do a simple color fill object. Make sure your RGB intensity is down a bit. You have white selected, and then just go in here to color fill object, and you just knock back uh, that poly paint here. So now we can kind of see, just based on my reference, the tongue is going to follow this shape here. It's going to tuck way back here. You see that white coming out? So kind of way back here and kind of way back here. So here's the tongue underneath everything. And in fact, it's actually part of this white mesh up here. So I'm gonna make sure it comes through here. Let's make the tongue here. And in fact, let's let's see if we can't do a two for one here, because this is all gonna be one contiguous mesh that makes up this whole front section, right? All part of the tongue, I think, is how it's put together. So I'm gonna go through here. One thing you can do, you can hold down Control Alt and tap to, uh, if you go down here to masking, you can do a uh, mask, you can do sharpen and blur, but it's basically a control tap to blur, control alt tap to sharpen. Um, so save yourself some time there. So control alt tap to tar uh, sharpen. And if I go into polyframe mode, you can see this is all just one polygroup. Just hit control W, control shift tap this red area, do polygroups, auto groups. So now you've got these two here. We want the, the violet and the uh, green. Hit control W, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Now if I zero mesh this, uh, well, one thing I want to do is this tongue doesn't go all the way through here. Let's hold down control shift and just select lasso and we'll just get rid of this. 
because we're going to add thickness here. Okay, geometry modify topology, delete hidden. Um, now, if I zero mesh this, it's going to build in all that aliasing. So let's go down here again, like we did earlier. Mask our open border. Uh, I'm going to grow it just a little bit. Control tap to invert that. De deformation polish by features. Open or close circle. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's nice and polished. You know, open circle probably better. So a nice smooth surface, and then we'll do a zero mesh half uh, a bunch of times. Um, if you want to make this go a little faster, you could just say, "Give me." 1k polys but it goes fast enough so now we have a nice low res representation of our tongue and we can go through and rebuild any of this if this is any of this is going to be problematic like this one kind of bugs me here um so if this is not working for you um let me see so this is going to cut all the way across i'm just going to go through here and say uh, collapse edge we'll just collapse these edges down here there we go nice sharp corners this is fine, you're not even gonna really see this, but again, if it bothers you, feel free to use, you know, we could do like a bridge two points here and then collapse this edge back or something like that. Eh, that's probably fine, whatever. So uh, we have a tongue in here. Um, so now let's go ahead and give this a little thickness. I'm gonna go out just a tiny bit. So Q mesh poly group all will go out just a bit, just a tiny bit here and then on the inside, it does look like it's pretty, it's got a pretty decent, eh, it's not that thick, but uh, along the edges there, it gets a little bit thicker. So that'll be the start of our tongue block out here. And again, we do have, we have features, right? So we have those polygroup borders. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick group by normals. That's under your polygroup menu. And that's going to give us a uh, polygroup along that top. So now when I do a crease by features, or a polish by features, sorry, we'll do close circle to maintain our volumes. That'll smooth this out and also keep those corners um, a little bit tighter, which isn't totally necessary, but I do want to maintain those edges a little bit, or at least those volumes. So here's our tongue built, and we'll go ahead and push this in a bit, and that'll just be uh, ready for us, one of our major volumes on the inside there. There we go. All right, so now we're ready for the rest. Let's go ahead and go back to our original here. And one more time, I'm going to duplicate this off because I want to always keep something around for me. Uh, and now it's just a matter of going through and rebuilding uh, these panels. Uh, you can do panel loops, you can mask, and you can zero mesh like we've been doing. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to go through here. I'm going to, instead of white, I'm going to go down here to a darker color and say uh, RGB intensity down color, fill object a couple times, just to kind of make this darker and make it easier a little more uniform. So now if I hold down shift and turn this off, uh, all we're going to see is where we need to make our panel lines. I'm going to do an insert Z sphere. And let's see. Okay. The Z sphere should be, let's go into transparency. This is sitting on the inside. I'm going to hit E to scale this down just to make sure it's out of the way. And then uh, I have a custom menu up here with Z sphere stuff. But if you want to do topology, you can go in here and say uh, edit topology, hit Q to go into draw mode, and then you can literally just go through here and plot points. You can use this or um, for simpler shapes. So we'll use our Z spheres for building some of it. For some of it, we can just go in here with BTO, that's a topology brush. Uh, so for shapes like this, it's perfect. You can just drag along and then cross over, cross, oops, let's do a little better than that, cross over, and then across, and then this is the panel, and then we're just gonna go through here and just drag on through and then drag on through. Now when I, if I hold on Alt and drag, that'll go ahead and clean this up. And if you want more, just like anything I ever bring up, if you want more in-depth stuff, just my YouTube channel, go in here and say, topology brush, and it'll give you a bunch of topology brush stuff. Or if you just want to look at topology, like different topology techniques, let's go in here and say topology. And there's a ton of topology stuff you can do. So, or retopology, I think they'll both pull up similar videos. Um, let me get caught up here. <laughs> yes, I'm a dark wizard. That's what I should have made, something from Stranger Things. Uh, one of those creepy ghoulies. Um, when I sculpt on object several subtools, I'm disturbed by the other subtools. Transparency mode solved this problem. Yeah, if you want to ignore your other subtools but still have them available, it's transparency with ghosts turned on and you can sculpt right on through. And if I miss anything, I apologize. There's a lot of questions coming in. Um, bottom panel would be heavy breathing Boolean work. Yeah, 
I think so. If you want to do it right, if you want to kind of just how we're probably going to do it today, because I don't have that much time left, uh, probably just like a, a chisel brush and just do it. Um, what happened when you keep dynamics? Yeah, uh, done. NFT. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, recommend to learn this workflow. This would be, it's a little older, but scroll down until you see the boot tutorial and that'll be a good one. I think. And in fact, even on the boot tutorial, there's an image in here. If you don't like video, there's 18 videos for the boot tutorial, but also this little follow along image right here. There you go. You can kind of zoom in and this will kind of walk you through. Um, scale around individuals like origin, like bunny. You can select multiple objects and scale them all around individual origin. How do I do that? ZBrush? Ah, <laughs> you would use nano mesh. Unfortunately, I do have. I did tweet that at Ask ZBrush. Um, let me see. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, so I did ask that. I don't think they replied, but basically, yeah, how would you scale along the central axis? But essentially, what you would do is put a plane wherever you want these objects and then use nano mesh to scale individually along those axes. Um, but unfortunately, not a way to just use like scale. Mm. Cool. So, um, maintain thickness of wrapping mesh like handle. Maintaining volumes. I might have to just manually fix that. Uh, work with their Houdini game dev playlists. I uh, wonder if a manual retope is eventually part of the pipeline or is it all in Houdini? Um, in that one, in that playlist, it's all Houdini. But um, God, if, you're really, if you're way smarter than me, you could definitely go through and uh, make an even better version of that to get you even better topology and just uh, Houdini. Uh, off topic question, do you have, you know, if this year's Z Summit is gonna be in no one's campus, also the exchange useful that the, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't really heard too much about it. I'm a little out of the loop. Again, I have been out of the ZBrush game for a minute. Uh, can you ask, set, if we can set the default startup material to a certain color on startup, oh, that's a good one. If you can't, what you can do is set up a scene with a sphere with the material and the color that you want and then go in here to file save as and save that let's just do it file save as go in here to zbrush 2022 z projects um here and just save it in here just be like startup scene so that whenever you load up zbrush and there's probably a, i think there's even a script you can do to have like auto load your startup thing but you can just whenever you start up zbrush just double click like underscore your default just overwrite this project if you want to honestly um and that'll load up a material with a color with a sphere and then you're all good to go but i do think there is like z like z startup plugins you can download from uh that'll, that'll handle all that for you it might be a little bit more inclusive cool uh <laughs> your crappy kitchen job absolutely have fun man um well, I shouldn't say that. It's probably not going to be too much fun, but uh, get through it. I mean, I remember you know, working at I worked Dairy Queen, Whataburger, Albertsons. Uh, I hit all the all the hot spots for working. <laughs> uh, customer service is a, a acquired taste, uh, a taste I never acquired. Uh, do you teach ZBrush or anything at university? Uh, CG Master Academy. I have a term that's just about to start up, so I do teach ish. Uh, okay, so uh, we got this. Now, if we just tap, that's going to give us a thickness on this panel based on our brush thickness size. Let's go ahead and turn off poly, poly paint here. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can just take your uh, draw size down to one and tap. That'll give you just a paper thin. And then we're going to go ahead and say split mass points, which is under your split menu. And now we have uh, a panel, which of course now we can go through here and just manually say Q mesh or extrude poly group ball and just kind of pull out. And now we've got... Um, our panel here, if we hit D for dynamic, uh, we already, it already has the polygroups creased. We'll go ahead and say crease level of two, smooth additive of three, and we'll go back here. And then um, I think that's what that piece looks like, right? So you're just gonna do that a million times. Now, if we do shift D, you're gonna see actually these corners need to be maintained. You can't just manually go through here and say, okay, just crease and edge, crease, edge, crease, edge. I like to be a little lazier than that. Um, let's make this more obvious. So we have an inside polygroup and outside polygroup by default. Oops. By default, so inside, outside. God, it's the exact same. There we go. Uh, and then you have a side, oops, uh, polygroup that's different. 
Um, if you do a group by normals, it will go through and look at your normal angles. However, this normal angle up here is broad and or 90 degrees, so it's going to capture polygroup here. So what I'm long story short, what I'll do in this situation, hold down Alt and Polypane, and then tap Alt as I held down, and that'll give me a new polygroup on the bottom. So now I've got if I just do a quick crease PG and then hit D for dynamic, that'll give me the shape I'm looking for. And then if I want to put a control group or control loop down there to tighten those edges up, I can. Long story short. Um, that just makes it so that if I ever want to make any changes, I can just do a quick crease by polygroup uh, again. Oops. And then I also want to make sure I turn off Dynamesh. Now, on this side again, let's just do it. We'll do this one a little bit faster. So, BTO, we're going to go through here and I'm going to pull through here. And then again, I'm just kind of following the shape that we have and then pull through and then go across. We want to make sure that we have enough resolution to maintain that shape. And then through here, I'm just going to put one right down the middle, I think. Or we can, you know, let's go I'll hug the side and then we'll hug the side here. Uh, again, you can hold down, if you want to manually delete these, you can hold down Alt and drag through them, or you can just hold down Alt and get rid of them, or you don't need to do either. We have our orange shapes here, right? So again, draw size down to one, tap off um, split mass points, and this will be into its own subtool here. And then again, if we just go through here and extrude and just tap, it'll give us the exact same thickness as the original. Uh, or the one we did previously. Um, and then again, one more time, just to kind of keep this bottom one creased how we want, just hold down Alt here, make this more obvious for you. There we go, crease PG, D for dynamic. It maintained my crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three on this one that we had on our original we created it with, and we're good to go. So we'll tap, oops, tap back on this one. In fact, these are probably fine to have. I'm just gonna merge these down together. Um, so now we have those two panels. Um, trying to think of anything that would be easy enough just to do with topology brush you might as well get out of the way and honestly all of these panels are probably easy enough you can go through and mask and zero mesh but these shapes are so simple it's probably better just to of course if I can probably better just to use the topology brush right um, and then we'll you know we'll cap this one here and then uh, we'll go through and just There we go. We got some geometry. We can make this hug that shape a little bit more. So we'll just go ahead and say again, a draw size, tap off, um, split mass points on this one. And then we'll say uh, extrude polygroup all just tap. And then let's go through here manually. I'm just gonna do this, check this out. Lasso all the way through here, control W to make that one polygroup. Make this one polygroup, control -Sh W, and then now if I go in here to crease PG, hit D for dynamic, we've got our shape, and we need to match it a little bit better. It's not a big deal, because we have very few polygons we're moving around, so I'm just gonna go in here with a big old brush. And again, you can go through and smooth, or what we were doing earlier, polish by features. Now that we have polygroups on all sides, and we can put automatic creasing on those, um, we're in good shape. We can polish to our heart's content, not ruin too much stuff, but. We'll go ahead and push this back in. Good enough. And then on this side here, um, BTO, we've got this one selected. Again, just real quick. Yoink. Ah. And then we'll do another technique in just a second. And then we'll cross all the way through, all the way up. And then down, and then through. Now, here's one thing. Uh, while you're doing this, you're seeing I'm keeping things generally spaced away. If you do start getting things where it kind of starts wanting to like loop around when you do it, see how it kind of snags on there? You can try going in here to uh, curve functions, curve snap distance, and turn that down to like one. And that'll make sure these don't, don't snap together very often. Um, but you can also make your brush size smaller. That'll give you more points across here, which isn't a huge deal in this case, but just something to keep in mind if you're having problems. Uh, and again, one tap. I'm not even going to bother making these into separate poly groups. We're just going to go in here and extrude. Shift D. I'm going to make some quick poly groups here. Control W. I'm sorry, different shapes, I should say. Uh, we'll keep them all in the same subtool. I'm going to grab this top one here. Control W. And then just decrease PG. D for dynamic. And then go back in here. Make sure this fits that shape like it should, looking good in the neighborhood. And then, so it looks like in our reference here, it looks like the white eh, kind of 
it kind of does a bunch of stuff, right? It kind of, the, the white is kind of underneath everything and then the red's on the top, but then this one kind of hops out a little bit. But I think as a good rule, the white can kind of just sit underneath everything and I'm going to worry more about the red uh, panels getting built. So let's use a different technique for that. We've already done zero mesh. We've already done topology brush. So for these shapes, let's go through here and let's control drag. Let's go back to our kind of working file here. We're kind of pulling stuff on off of. And this tab will be separate. Okay, so for this, this red piece here, Let me look at this open image and new tab here. This goes across and stops here. Okay, I need to add that to my shape. So if I go back in here, I'm gonna tap C to sample. We have RGB turned on for this. Let's bump this up to 100%. Just wanna make sure that I know that this is its own piece here. Okay, so uh, again, this is a simple enough shape, but just for different techniques, let's turn everything off except for the Z-sphere and this working object here. And I'm gonna go in here to, um, yeah, let's do it down here so you can see it. You will go down here with that Z-sphere selected, go down here to topology and go in here to edit topology. Another thing I like to do is adapt the skin, density down to one, dynamesh resolution down to zero, and you'll see why in just a second. So I'm gonna go through here, we're in draw mode, not move mode. So I'm gonna go through here and just start plotting points. So here all the way down and then down and over. The white kind of comes out and goes over it, but this looks like a separate panel piece. So we're just gonna keep this all one panel. So this one gonna go through and we're just plotting points with Z spheres. And then we're gonna go up and over and then up and then back over. So we're just putting geometry down. Like so. And then uh, right across here, I'm just gonna kind of follow the dots we've already plotted here we're going to put one down the middle because i think we'll need that geometry to support and then it's going to go back and forth here here and here and i'll show you one more technique for kind of building out panels using a cool z modeler brush after this so this is z spheres and we're just using this and the cool thing about this is you can hit w and go back in here it's like when you're doing topology brush you can't move that curve anymore um, actually, you can move those curves, but I wouldn't recommend it with a topology brush. Um, but here, you can go through here and you can move points around. You can hold down Alt and you can delete points and then, you know, redraw uh, points. It's it's a little bit, this one's definitely a little bit of an acquired taste. Like most people I know where I'm like, here's how you do Z-sphere topology. And they're like, well, that was awful. I did not like that. So I'll show you another thing that might uh, be a little more palatable for most in just a second here. But I I've been doing this for so long that I kind of prefer Z-sphere topology, um, but again, it does take a little bit of, I guess practice is the right word, getting a feel for how this works. Okay, so here you can make this a five-sided or a little, I mean, I'm, I'm not in love with this topology. Um, so while you're in this mode, you can, you know, again, it's all snapping to the surface here. So I may go, you know what, let's scoot all this stuff up a little bit. I'm just going to go back through and just kind of cut in and then hold uh, tap in here, hold down Alt and Delete. And that way, you know, I don't get that weirdo star onto my geo that's going to cause smoothing problems. And then same thing over here. Where I'm like, you know what, just lean to one side and then cut up and then we'll get rid of this one. And we'll push all these over here. And then uh, same thing, we'll, we'll lean over to this side here and we'll say, yeah, let's cut this up and then tap in, oops, alt tap, there we go. And everything's snapping, everybody's happy. We're just going between move, which is W, and Q, which is draw, and there we go. So we have these panels here. Now, if I hit A here and go into solo mode, Turn this up so you can see it. You're gonna see uh, this is the result that we get. And if we had the original settings, which is density of two, this just subdivides once and then dynamesh resolution. This turns this, if we hit A and then A again, this turns this into a dynamesh. Um, in this case, really not what we're looking for. So again, dynamesh down to zero, density down to one, and now you're just gonna get that geometry that you made. Doesn't have to be perfect. We can, you know, scoot stuff around as needed. Uh, but for now, we can go through here and we can say, uh, with the Z-sphere selected, go down here, hit, you know, we're in A, which is Adaptive Skin Preview. If we like this, we can say Adaptive Skin, make Adaptive Skin. That's gonna shoot that skin just out here in your tool palette. Underneath the Z-sphere, I'm gonna say Insert, 
that skin Z sphere. Take the Z sphere here. So here's here's the skin Z sphere we just inserted. I'm gonna go down here to the Z sphere. If I had this stuff split out, I would just move it down and keep retopologizing. But one thing I can do is I can turn this off. And then with our Z sphere selected, I can say, uh, go into our topology. And we can say, delete topology that gets rid of that. Um, and then we're still in edit topology mode. So now I can hit Q and now I can just um, keep making more topology. So I can actually go through here and we'll just make this shape real quick. Uh, and that cuts across. You know what, I'm gonna put this one all the way, maybe not all the way down, but I am gonna continue with this down so I can have these things overlapping here. And it kind of goes up and around here. There we go. And then, uh, you know what, we'll put one right down the middle, like so. And then again, just back and forth, back and forth. So that way uh, you can go through here pretty quickly and uh, make topology with Z-spheres. Just keep deleting topology, appending, or inserting that skin Z-sphere, and you'll be in pretty good shape. And then uh, again, if you get in this kind of situation that you don't, you're not really in love with, just, we'll just kind of favor that one side and we'll just cut another line through and then tap, alt, tap here, move around as needed. Or if it's easier, just use the topology brush or the next technique we're about to go over. That's more your style. Uh, one more time on this side. You know, yeah, this might, this might cause some interesting problems. So let's go ahead and do it. It might be okay. It might not, but we'll see. Go down into this one just a bit. And then through the middle. And then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then the other side here. And you can mix these techniques, the topology brush techniques and the Z modeler techniques and the Z sphere techniques all together too, if you want to. Um, but just like we did earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you can cut through. Oops. There we go. And then uh, this one, we'll just go ahead and cut through here. You, you, you. And I'm gonna tap in the middle of this one and hold down alt so I don't delete everything around it. And again, we'll just kind of scoot this stuff around just to kind of give ourselves a little more breathing room around these edges, make them a little more uniform. There we go. All right, got our shapes. So now for here, what I do, uh, if I hit A for depth of skin, that's gonna give us our geometry. We can look at it and go, okay, that's about what I'm expecting. Um, and then we can say, you know, make adaptive skin again, like we did earlier, and then insert that skin Z sphere here. If you're done with Z spheres, you can just delete it out of your scene. And then now you have this one here. And now you can go through here with your move brush or your Z modeler brush or whatever. And then we can go through here again, ex tap extrude, and this will make it the exact same depth as the, the other pieces here. Uh, this is going to be curved through here. So I want to keep that uh, the same. So, you know, feel free to, you know, crease poly groups or whatever. And, you know, let's go down here and say, we'll make, so let's do it on both sides. We'll make all of these one poly group here. So we can do a crease PG and then I'll go ahead and crease that for us. And this back corner here, eh, these are all pretty, this is curved. So this one I might just do manually. Oops, looks like we put one right down the middle. Let's go in here to insert single edge loop, hold down alt to get rid of that one. And then we're gonna go in here and say crease edge. Now, what I'm gonna do here is uh, everything looks fine, right? Uh, let's go in here to deformation and inflate. Okay, everything's fine. One thing to be careful of is whenever you make one of these, you can go down here to display properties. It'll turn on double automatically. If you turn double off, uh, you may see something like uh, this. Uh, if it gives you this morph target thing, sometimes it'll store a morph target too. Let's go in here to morph target and just delete that out of there. So now sometimes you'll see this. So if you go through here and you have double turned on and you do an inflate, you're gonna see it's gonna shrink instead of inflate. That means your normals are flipped. So go down here to display properties, turn off double and then flip to flip your normals back. In fact, you can also get stuff like this where you have you know one side flipped and one side not. 
To fix that, obviously, you can just go in here and just grab one side, flip it, and now your normals are facing in the correct direction that they should be. Uh, so now one more technique, we've already rebuilt some of this stuff, is, um, okay, this one's easy enough. So let's mix techniques here. So in order to draw on something, you can select something without subdivision history, which this Dynamesh block out doesn't have, which is totally fine. So let's go in here to BTO for our topology, BTO for our topology brush. So if you wanted to start something like this, you can go through here and you can say, okay, I'm gonna start drawing on here. And then uh, again, you can go down here to draw size of one and just tap and then do a split mass point. So now you have this here is just, you know, simple geometry. Then you have a surface, right? Um, I, in my custom menu, I have a subtool project all, and that'll go ahead and project uh, this and inherit the poly paint, which I don't want. It's hard to hold down shift and turn off poly paint here. So now if I do a project all, here. Uh, and actually what I like to use more than project all is going to get confusing, but I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to grab this piece here. I'm going to hold down control and tap that point in history. So I'm going to store these vert positions in uh, memory. I'm going to go down to this working thing that I'm working on. Instead of doing a project all, I'm going to do a project history. So it doesn't matter if I have other extra sub tools or anything, it's only going to project to this. And it also projects in and out as opposed to just one direction. Long story short, these verts are now sitting on the surface. So if we go in here to transparency mode, let's go ahead and turn on another thing here. Uh, transparency mode, and we'll go ahead and turn uh, RGB drain back on. So now I can go into my Z modeler brush and uh, you can even have, if you hit the comma key, go in here to brushes, you can say, oh, what am I looking for? Um, Z modeler. Here we go. Go into your Z modeler folder and you're gonna see we have Z modeler brushes set up for slice and topology. So with Z modeler brush, if you hit uh, if you hit B, you're gonna see I have these just auto loaded into my Z brush. So I can assign a hotkey to these if I wanted to. So instead of signing a hotkey to like, oh, I want to extrude an edge for a hotkey, I want to um, uh, or to extrude a face or extrude an edge or ext extrude a point uh, with a hotkey, you can actually set up a face, an edge, and a point action all with one hotkey, which is your Z modeler brush. So for example, the Z modeler topology brush. If I hover over a face, it's set to do nothing. If I hover over an edge, it's set to extrude um, and snap the surface. And if I hover over a point, it's set to move by brush radius, snap the surface. So essentially we have, uh, we can tap Alt to drag out an edge ring. We can tap Alt twice uh, to do an entire edge loop if we want to, um, or we can just do it individually. So I can just drag this out here, just tap Alt once. And then as I drag this one out, it's gonna snap automatically to geometry that's around it. Um, so again, we can just tap Alt once and we can go through here and I can move these points around. It'll snap to the surface. If it ever gets away from the surface, just again, remember project history, get those points back on there. And now you can just go through here really quickly and use this as kind of a, like a quad draw type thing. So let's we'll go through here and we'll just move these points around and it'll snap to the surface. Uh, and in fact, yeah, as these points get closer, they'll start snapping to each other. So again, if you want to move this up, oops, just tap Alt here, just move one up and then you can snap this down and then move this over, you're in good shape. Uh, of course, we don't need that. So that's just another option for you. This is kind of a quad draw methodology. Let's go to uncrease all. So now we have these are all snapping to the surface as we move. And if we want to go back to our regular Z modeler brush, that's just BZM, or I can just use my hotkey to go back to Z modeler. And now it's whatever action. So if you want to say insert single edge loop here, project history, um, go back to our topology brush. And now we're back to moving with snapping verts and extruding edges and all that stuff. So. Another option for you, if that's better. And all of this can be found, again, on my YouTube channel. I want to say that was like ZBrush 2021. That is a monster playlist in here. So ZBrush 2021, what's new? Um, if you even do a search in here for topology, yeah, dynamic retopology simulation, edge extrusion welding geometry, yeah. So that's kind of a sizzle video of it. And then down here, it's ZModeler edge extrude retopology techniques. So here's the 2021 playlist. And if this is easier for you to eyeball, my ArtStation page here, here's the intro to ZBrush right here. It's 50 videos or so. And then here's the what's new for every version of ZBrush all the way back to ZBrush 4 or 8. So that might be easier if you want to kind of go dig through there. Um, okay, let me get caught up. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. Ah. Uh, Best adult, best adult dating site. I've been out of that game for a long time. Um, 
project also. Yes, retopology. Uh, UFC fighter with Pavlovich? Uh, not that I know of, although we're a pretty rare group, so maybe. Uh, I'm not much of a fighter, though, so he got all those fighting genes. Cool. Um, let's see here. Let me see if I can block some of these. Uh, yeah, we don't need this, so let's say if we do uh, block user on YouTube. Boom. Okay. We'll get rid of that. Uh, Z sphere. Yeah, Z sphere topology. So yeah, and in here, if you uh, so that was we just did the edge extrusion techniques. But if you go through here and just do like Z sphere topology, there's a bunch of videos on that. Different modes. Um, uh huh. Uh -huh. Export block out and everything. So just, perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So uh, we've got that shape. So we've got we've covered all the different techniques. Um, mostly, I think this one's simple enough to where you could probably just get away with BTO for everything. So just really quickly, I'm going to go through here just so we can get um, a little bit more interesting stuff done. Maybe we'll tap off here and I'll say uh, split mass points. And then, so what else are we missing? Let's hold down shift and turn everything else back on except for this one here. And it looks like we're not missing much. I mean, we've, we've done a pretty good job. So it looks like this red... Uh, part down here, so I'm going to grab this one here, and we'll turn everything off. And for this shape, um, yeah, we'll just use this one. Might be actually, eh, no, it'll be fine. So if you want to continue the topology brush here, you can just kind of stop and then just click on that last in this pole, and that'll that'll get you back on there, and then all the way around. And I'm just going to kind of continue this one here. And if your ear gets a little bit wobbly, that's okay. We can always straighten our polygons out later after it's actually polygon. So we're going to go through here and click through. Now this one might be a little tricky. Yeah, hold on Alt and drag. Oh, that cleaned up too much. We'll, we'll go back and fix that in just a second. So here we're in good shape. If it ever gives you any problems, show you how to fix it so here through here all right and then um, hold down alt and drag and we'll go through and clean up some of this so it looks like there's a lot of just trash geometry in here so I'm gonna hold down alt to get rid of those and I'm gonna connect these two and then just drag through um, this is where I start to dislike topology brush because it gets real finicky sometimes um, you know like it starts adding like little double points along here so I don't know it just bugs me, but it's just a simple matter of holding out alt and dragging through. It's not terrible, it's just annoying. Uh, so again, I'm gonna make our brush size a little bit bigger, and then we're gonna put a line right, um, yeah, I'm gonna put a line right through here. You could do an interactive elevation, uh, but I wanted to snap to the surface that we have, so I'm gonna just kinda drag through, and then go to this side so I can see, and then continue this line, and if that line wants to play not nice, you can go through and delete, but it looks like we did okay. So again, draw size of one, tap, split mass points, um, extrude polygroup all on that one if you want, or if you don't want to extrude just yet, um, you can just say, you know, extrude polygroup all, just hold down shift as you pull along that surface normal, and then you can go through here, and again, just kind of refine where these points need to end up. Uh, and then once you're ready, now you can go through here, I'll just do in a quick extrude, um, crease PG, which I think it already does, and then we'll just go through here, and uh, we'll hit D for dynamic, and then you'll go through here and you'll crease just like what we've been doing over and over and over again. So we turn everything else back on. You know what, just really quick, I'm to do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and say extrude and Alt-Tap alt here. By the way, if you Alt-Tap on your object, um, let's go ahead and hide that one here. There we go. And then we'll extrude this one out. So now we're getting a pretty good idea. And we'll go ahead and Alt-Tap this one and we'll extrude this one out of what's been made and what hasn't. And it looks like that's all of our tongue and really all we're missing is these black uh, parts here and this white part here. Um, and we're out of time. Oh no, I might have to hop over on my channel for another hour and uh, just just continue on this. But essentially all you were, you know, let's do this real quick. So you've got this stuff blocked out. So now we want to start doing a little bit more uh, detail work on these. And that's essentially going through, you've already extruded uh, like thickness on here. 
Uh, so now you want to go through and put on your stitching, right? So we'll just do one uh, version of these and you can extrapolate this information to the rest. Um, yeah, so we'll just pick this one here. I think that'll work. So let's go through here. So we want to detail out, uh, you know, I'm going to split these up just in case it gets confusing. Split off. Okay, so we have one uh, panel here and it's got thickness on it. So we're in good shape. So basically what we want to do is we want to put a stitch around the inside of this that goes all the way uh, straight through and down. So actually, before we do that, first things first, we need to make sure I would go through and do all the panels and then go through and just do any little sculpting you need to do. Like, um, so through here, I'm going to go through here and say dynamic apply to make this real geometry. So if you did need to go through here with like your inflate brush and just kind of um, inflate along that surface, almost turn it, okay, it pulls off. Um, this actually goes on top of this one, so we're going to pull this out just a bit and then alt tap this one and we can move this back. So it's the dance between all these different uh, panels here. If you need to make them thicker, you can just go through here. Now you've already added this as real geometry, but you can go through here, control tap any of these and you can still do um, like an inflate along that surface normal with just that poly group if you want to thicken that up a little bit. So you're not totally lost if you've if you've committed your polygroups here, we'll go ahead and pull this down into the rubber here. So we have this geometry and this is going to be, we're going to use this as our like sculptable geometry here. So we go out of transparency mode. You're going to see, let's go in here and let's start a material. Okay, so uh, we've got this here. So now, um, you know, as, actually this will have holes poked into it. That's okay. Let's go back down to solution level two. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Um, it's going to have one, two, three, holes poked into it. So let's go in here and say delete lower. Uh, we got one, two, three. Oh, not quite. That would be a lot easier if I could be cooler if I could, man. Um, I wonder. Yeah, let's do this. Let's undo back to before we had just to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, so Shift D, I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna say slide edge, oops, slide edge over here. And then I'm gonna actually switch this to slide point here. So we're gonna slide along our existing geometry here. And again, slide edge, slide point. All right, let's add another cut. So insert single edge loop, oops, insert single edge loop here. There we go. Now, if I hit uh, control D to subdivide and then delete lower, I can say I want a hole. Actually, let's go ahead and this out a little bit. And we'll move these corners back into that rubber like we did earlier. Okay, so we've deleted lower. I don't, I can actually go in here. I don't need this middle one. We'll simplify this. So insert single edge loop, hold down alt. And then we're gonna go through here and we're gonna say, okay, here, here, and here is where we want our holes punched through. Actually, it looks more like here and here. I'm gonna fudge this. Yeah, easy enough. So, okay, so we're gonna say um, extra, uh, Q mesh, poly group ball, and we're just gonna pull through. Um, you may need to, since I have moved these a little bit, uh, we may need to go through here one by one. So I'm gonna say Alt and then drag through. Uh, Alt and then uh, drag through. Boy, these went. How did these get so off? You know what? Sorry. Isolate this top one, Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. Extrude Polygroup Ball. I'm just gonna pull this back so I know that's the exact same geometry on both sides. Flip, Alt, and now it's a lot easier to extrude QMesh Polygroup Ball. And when I use QMesh, it will actually um, go ahead and uh, weld those uh, for me. So if I hit D for dynamic, now we've got a uh, whole poke through. I can still go through here, increase PG if I want to, increase level of two, smooth set of three. Um, in fact, let's do increase level of one, smooth set of two. So here's our working panel here. It's looking okay. And I can go through here and I can be like, ah, this hole needs to go over a little bit more. Let's kind of get these into place how they need to go. Uh, let's go ahead and dynamic apply this geometry. Control D once to kind of uh, subdivide one more time. And now we can go through here and we can kind of start dialing in like where our panel lines need to go. Now, I 
I'm going to put stitches along here and that's going to kind of determine uh, where this goes. But so just to kind of get this in here, um, let's use Dami Damien standard with the lazy radius up just a bit. Just go into your stroke menu and turn our Z intensity down. Actually, maybe even orbs cracks might be a good one too. So we'll go through here and just kind of indicate where our stitches are going to be placed. They're going to kind of be embedded and it's actually a double stitch. So we're going to do one along here, although it might be easier. You know what, do we want, how fancy do we want to get? Let's get fancy. Um, I'm going to duplicate this off. I'll show you a little trick. So I'm going to duplicate this off. Um, and this is real geometry. I'm going to delete lower. I'm going to hold down control shift and isolate just the blue parts and then do control shift S to shrink and then uh, control W to make that its own poly group. And in fact, let's go down here to masking open border, control tap to invert that, uh, polish by features just to smooth that out a little bit, control shift tap. So now I have uh, an indented um, area along here. So again, if I just take this pink one here and we do, um, yes, and I do to control shift S to shrink, control W, and again, we'll mask this and invert it or polish. I'm trying to think of if I'm missing anything here. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is go through here. And I want to do like an inset polygroup all uh, inset polygroup island here. That's eh, not really going to work, is it? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We'll delete this. <laughs> go back over to our original. We'll duplicate this off. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna apply this. Let's go down here. Let's do, make sure, delete higher. So there's level two is fine. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna isolate this. No, we're gonna do this. Inset, polygroup, island, legacy. We're gonna pull in a little bit. So we're gonna put stitches around this interior space. I'm gonna ignore this for now. Um, We'll inset again. So this green one here, I'm going to isolate just the green. We'll do auto groups. And now I'm just going to isolate just the orange here. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to inset a polygroup island. Sorry, this is being kind of convoluted. But essentially what I'm getting at is I want to go through here and say, um, let's say QMesh polygroup all, hold down shift to pull this back. Or, you know, let's make it a little bit harsher. Let's actually just pull this in. So now I've hit D for dynamic. I got a nice cut in here, right? But it's super, you know, it's, there's a lot of extra geometry in there. It's super dense. It's going to get kind of pinched in certain areas, and I don't really, I'm not in love with that. So what I can do is I can transfer this cut line that we're using over to our other shoe that has the nicer geometry, or the simpler geometry, I should say. Uh, in fact, let's do this one more time because it's a double stitch, right? So we're going to go through here. Let's do, um, and in fact, we don't even, uh, let's, let's go, inset, polygroup, Island again. We'll go. Yeah, this is going to be problematic. Damn. Collapse edge. I could go through and slice. Okay, I'm just going to show you. It's going to require a little more work than I want to really put in here. Uh, but essentially, well, I'll just show you this. So now we have uh, put on D for dynamic, and we've got this one with the nice cut line all the way around it. Uh, so now what we can do is we can say, uh, Let's say dynamic apply. So it's real geometry. I want to hold down control and tap that point in history. Go back to our original. And this is just uh, geometry, right? So I'm going to hit control D a couple times to subdivide. And now I go in here to B R, oops, B H R, which is history recall brush. I can literally just go in here and paint that line into this object. So I don't need to worry about like, you know, using Damien standard and cutting in a perfect line. I can put that perfect line in another piece of geometry and then just project that cut line onto this geometry, um, which is a little bit better. Now I can hold down control shift and isolate if it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, control shift and isolate just the blue part so I don't accidentally go to another part I don't want to. And then again, B H R for history recall brush. And again, History Recall Brush, you can, that was a 2020 thing, I believe. You can look that up on my YouTube channel. That'll give you all the ins and outs of that one. So we can just use this as a way to kind of get detail from a modeled one with a bunch of extra edge loops you don't necessarily want. And then you can just transfer this information on over.
a little bit onto a cleaner mesh, I suppose. So something to give a shot maybe. And you can use this in conjunction with morph brushes and layers if you want to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and now you'll have, you know, that line. So then you can go through here on this one, you have subdivision history. So you're going to go down to like subdivision level four and like go in here with your standard brush or your clay brush. Go in here to Z add here. Z intensity down. So yeah, standard brush or clay brush. You can kind of go through here and, you know, maybe put in a little bit of creases or folds or any of that kind of stuff. And then I go back up in your subdivision history. You'll still have your details and control shift tab to bring everything else back. And what else were we doing? Um, there's even cloth brushes. So BC, um, you can use like cloth. Uh, what are you looking for? Cloth nudge. Now this is going to be like an intense cloth. So let's go down here to like seven, subdivision level four. So less geometry, bigger wrinkles. And in fact, you can go down here to thick skin. That's another thing you can look up on my YouTube channel. So thick skin, thickness down. So now you can actually like push wrinkles across a surface if you want to. You can dial that in. Or what I usually do is go in here to pinch brush, go down here to brushes, um, elasticity, crank, crank simulation iterations up. You can do this with any brush. And now you can go through here and you can just add uh, wrinkles. Now it is capping out because we have thick skin turned on, but you can turn that off. And now you can go, th go through here and you can just add um, some cloth wrinkles as needed. Um, all that to say, uh, you can get your details back and you can even go back to those stitches look a little smaller, don't they? Uh, we can even go back to our working file here and we can say, you know what? Let's um, go down here to seven level two, delete lower, delete higher. Uh, I want stitches to go in here, right? Control shift tap, judge modify to poly, delete hidden. We're gonna go through here and say uh, poly group poly loop here and then go back just like we did earlier, go in here to our stroke menu say curve functions frame our polygroup mesh go back to our stitches brush these are going to be considerably smaller are you going to use your original mesh here that had your detail cut in and now you can go through here and you can just tap um, let's turn off polyframe this one might be embedded a little too much and also let's hit d for dynamic so we put these on okay and let's uh, take this curve so underneath brush embeds negative two, let's do positive two, just to kind of bump it out above positive five. Okay, so now we've got little stitches uh, going along here. I'm actually going to say maybe positive 10, geez. Okay, good enough. We can tap here, we can say, uh, again, like we did visibility Hide point, control shift drag, judge modify topology, delete hidden, D for dynamic. Uh, and this one too, if you want to go through here and do a slight inflate, like maybe a 0.5 inflate on these stitches, uh, or maybe a one. Yeah. There we go. We can kind of fatten these up. Let's do another inflate. There we go. So we got some nice fat stitches on here. And then you can go through here with the move brush. And you can say, let's move this back in a little bit, move this one back out a little bit. You can go through here and individually move these. You can just turn on uh, auto masking, uh, topological, or mask by polygroups if you have them all separate polygroups, whatever you want to do. And now you've got little stitches and your leather and then your laces. And then it's basically just that over and over and over again for, I don't know, probably a day. And then you'll get this one done. Now, if I was doing this in production too, I wouldn't necessarily model in like this texture. I wouldn't even necessarily model in the stitches. I'd probably do that in the texture. This would just be in the texture. Uh, shoe laces here, if I go in here to shoe, there's a couple different shoe lace techniques. I go over in here and this right here, make a shoe and then Z-Sphere shoes. A couple different shoe lace techniques. I'll go ahead and drop this in there. But anyway, like I said, I'm over, so. Um, Let's see here. Uh, I do have a Discord. That reminds me. I don't, I'm never really on mine, but um, I will tell you my thing here. All right, maybe I'll. Let's do this. Um, deselect. God. Uh, Discord. This. 
Pav Mike, number 6909. That's me on there. Um, uh, symmetrical retopology, are there any things I need when suddenly get the error? Mesh is not symmetrical action cancel apart from using mirror and weld all the time. Oh, that's a tough one too. Yeah, if you have um, subdivision history, you can go down here to deformation, smart resim. You can mask the side you like and then do a smart resim and that'll hopefully resymmetrize <laughs> that. Um, there's posable symmetry, but I wouldn't necessarily use that for Z modeler. Cool. Um, yes, this... Um, and the boot is finished. What is the best way to put on a character that's in a difficult pose? Let's say running without breaking everything, or at least as little as possible. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Um, gosh, because you're gonna. Yeah, you're right. You're gonna have a bunch of different pieces, and you're gonna have to. Oof. The bad answer is well, the okay answer is tra uh, under Z plugin. There's Transpose Master, and what that's gonna do is if I wanted to go through, I'll show you. Let's turn our working shoe off. Let's say I had all the panels done and I had uh, everything's all subdivided and stuff and uh, I just want to say, hey, I want to pose this entire thing out. That's when you can go in here to transpose master. Let's take our Z plug in all the way over here. T pose mesh is going to take all your sub tools, drop them down to the lowest subdivision history uh, or subdivision level and then control drag over and then you can say, okay, I want to, you know, this guy's going to be running. So I'm going to go through here and like move this around and um, I don't know, whatever crazy stuff you want to do. Uh, and then you can hold down control shift and isolate pieces and move stuff around as needed. Um, you are going to have some stump stuff break. That's just what happens. Um, like this here is getting a little wonky, but you can go through here and you can kind of try and alleviate some of this stress <laughs> here. You could even try and go in here and do like your um, polish by features if you want to. But um, again, you know, you're going to have a bunch of this type of stuff happening, right? So if we go back. If you're gonna be moving stuff, what might behoove you is control tap, just to kinda, let's undo that. Uh, control tap to really kinda blur that, and it's easier because you have subdivision history. Um, but yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna be a nuisance. I'll just be straight up honest with you. Unless you wanna go through and like rig and weight all these complex shapes, um, you know, you're, you're just, you're in for a little bit of heartache cleanup. I wish I had a better answer for you, but you'd go through here and do your difficult pose, and then you would say, okay, T-Pose Master to T-Pose Mesh. In fact, let's go back here. I'm just going to do a quick, before I do that, um, save as. Let's go, I'm streaming. This is a new folder called Jordans. Okay, uh, go back to our T-Pose Mesh. Okay, we're ready. We're gonna go T-Pose Mesh to T-Pose to Sub-T. It's gonna go through and apply all the changes that we've made uh, to our subtools. So now they're all separate subtools uh, that you can go in and modify them. So now that we've got this uh, bent in a little bit, you probably wanna go through here and Alt-Tap here and say, uh, let's go in here, New Damien Standard. Put in some wrinkles along here. And again, like we were doing earlier, we could say, uh, Go through here with our pinch brush with cloth on, maybe set it in level three and get some nice healthy, you know, wrinkles going across here. Um, do any fixes you need to do, which on this is probably going to be a royal pain. Um, I would even probably manually go in here and probably delete some of those stitches. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Or you can bake it all down to a game res, and then uh, you can. That's that'll be a lot easier to pose out. But if you're like 3D printing something, ugh, what I might do is do the stitches after the pose. So get this thing all posed out and then go through and do your stitches because, yeah, stitches are nasty. Um, yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you, but it can get not fun. Um, cool, no problem. Glad to be here. Glad everybody got something out of this. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, cool, cool, cool. All right. I think I'm all caught up. Oh, we got another adult dating site guy in here. Um, how much do you make annually as a 3D artist? I don't know how much I make. It kind of depends if you're starting out or if you've been doing this for a while or how marketable your skills are, but it could be anywhere from, I don't know, the also depending on where you live. That's another huge uh, version for a reason why how much you would get paid the what you do. So 
if you're an awesome 3D artist living in San Francisco, working for a big bad company, I don't know, you probably pulled in 300K or so. Uh, cool. Stager to pose and work on your model. Yeah, uh, that's another one too. If you're a big Stager fan, uh, check that out. So Geometry Stager. Um, oops, there it is. Home Stage, Target Stage. You can look that up on my YouTube channel and get the more. Uh, stitch modeling per second. I uh, hope the beauty. Yeah, it should. And I'm going to upload this on my channel as well. So it won't go anywhere. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I'll hop out. And uh, well, I'll stream on my channel on Thursday. So if you want to, you know, I'll just continue with this maybe. Unless you guys have a different idea. Um, but yeah, start making your shoes. They can be, f they're a little tedious, but uh, they can also be fun. It's a lot of the same stuff over and over again. And uh, you can get some really, really nice results. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Oops, lost my window. <laughs>